are live. Welcome to tonight's Teaching Raid live stream coming to you from Sarlona. If you are new to these events, this is something that uh, me and my guild have been doing for five years now where we're taking folks that are newer to raids and showing them how the raids work in a in a newbie friendly low stress learning environment where we focus on learning the raid mechanics tonight's event is going to be vision of destruction in the subterrain then tower of despair in in shavroth and then epic chronoscope and tonight's event is a a, them a thematic event that uh, we call our Death to Sulamadis Teaching Raid Extravaganza. So it actually has a, a theme of following Sulamadis, the Horn Devil, through all the raids he appears in. Just grouped them together for fun, but also because it's it sort of makes sense from a practical standpoint that you know there are so many raids in the game, you know, and we don't want to you know spend a whole event just doing like a shorter raid like Vision of Destruction for example so I wanted to group some together and uh, this makes for a fun thematic event and um, you know, we're, we're taking in folks that sometimes are brand new to the game sometimes been playing a while never raided before sometimes long time vets that just may be new to whatever raid we're doing that night. Anything and everything in between. And we're not trying to make these folks experts of the raids. We're just trying to, you know, get people involved in the raiding scene, uh, teach them what they need to know to run the raids, and so that maybe they'll feel comfortable joining a pug of these raids. Hey, Mark, welcome to the live stream. So I, I will be monitoring the chat in the live stream. If anybody has any questions, I'll try to answer those. My attention is going to be focused on the people here in the raid, but I will be monitoring the chat as well and answering questions when I can. So if you're watching the live stream, you have, you have at least five minutes before the action gets started because i got to take a few minutes to get folks invited in here. Everybody that's here right now are my guildies that are just here to help out. And, you know, because these are older raids, it's really they're just here for fun more than anything else. Because, you know, VOD, Epic Chronoscope, and uh, Vision of Destruction, or, and Tower of Despair, excuse me. Uh, these are all, you know, they're older raids, lower level raids, so, you know, it's, it's not like you need a bunch of people to complete those. Which is going to be also one of the things that I'll mention during the event. Okay, I'm going to get the new folks started, or... Uh, brought into the group here, so if you're watching a live stream, plenty of time to go grab a drink or something. right now mark nice hey angry tiger welcome hey thanks a lot Hi, Mathene, welcome. Hi, Rusi, welcome. Hello.
I saw Fidelma here a minute ago, but now I don't see her. Oh, okay. Uh, Arusi, you just sent me a tell right before this saying that this was your first time ever using voice chat in-game? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm going to help you out with that because we're already experiencing some issues. Okay. So um, what's happening is like we're hearing like the background stuff. like We're hearing you type and everything. And so there are two ways to resolve that. And I'm going to walk you through that if that's cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so you want to go into your audio settings, you know how to get to do that? Yep. In okay, cool. And what is preferable is that you switch from hands-free to, to, um, to push to talk. Uh, that's a preferable way for most people in game. That's sort of a more, uh, more courteous way to do it. Uh, because the thing is when people use like hands-free mic, then like a lot of background stuff, you know, like babies crying and t televisions and typing and food eating and burping and sneezing come through the mic and that irritates a lot of people. So um, you want to uh, enable, let's see, you want to uncheck the box that says hands-free voice. Done. Now, alternatively, if what you can also do is you can just turn down the voice let me see what the exact thing is called voice capture threshold there's a slider bar that's a few down from there and that will sort of reduce the sensitivity of the mic so it won't catch as much of the background stuff like if we're you know some people just they can't do the push to talk for whatever reason so that's another option but uh, if push to talk is an option then that's definitely preferable for most people and for Usually, like I said, the people that you're grouped with will prefer that you do push to talk. And that's uh, key F? Yep. That's the default F key. F is in Fox Street. Sweet. I'm doing that then. Cool. All right. And so you said Fidelma is having loading issues. Uh, Shall we stand by for a couple minutes, or do you think that it's not going to happen for her? It will happen. It's just the way that her system loads up is a little funky. Okay. No problem. And we are live streaming, guys, by the way. Um, and welcome again. So we got some folks that... I think are brand new to our teaching raids, but and I know we've got some folks here that are returning. Uh, but I want to know, like, have you attended these teaching raid events before, or if this is your first time for everybody? First time for me. I've done a few teaching raids, but I haven't done any of these classes before, except Chronoscope, which I did in Okay, cool. Mathene, I, I recognized your name. I feel like I've run with you. You may be in Pugs or something, but I couldn't place it. So, if you haven't uh, attended these events before, um, just making sure you know that this these are events that we do every week uh, through the winter and spring. And we do like a different raid or set of raids every week. And it's all designed for people who are you know, new to the raids or maybe even people who are still learning. So it, sometimes that means people who are really new to the game. Sometimes that means people who have been playing since beta that just for whatever reason didn't, you know, maybe they don't know the raid we're doing that evening or maybe they just never got into raiding. You know, we, we see uh, a variety of folks or, or, uh, that fit into well, you know, different categories and there are a lot of reasons why people avoid raiding, so if, if you're new to raiding, that's cool. Like, sometimes we get people, like, it's their first raid 
ever. We've had people that have literally never grouped with anybody before in our teaching raids. Uh, so really happy to have you. Uh, half the group right now is my guildies that are here just to help out, make sure things are smooth run. I always bring several of my guildies along just to help make sure things run smoothly and to help maybe answer questions that I don't know the answer to. Like I'm not a real, like I'm not a melee person, so whenever there are questions about melees, I usually don't know the answer, so they, they help me out there. And sometimes I misspeak, you know. But uh, at any point during tonight's event, you know, we're going to go over a lot of information. We got three different raids to do. If you have any questions, uh, you're not sure what's going on, you're lost, uh, you want more explanation about something, etc. Just ask at any point, and don't hesitate to interrupt me, because otherwise I'm just going to keep explaining. Um, especially if, if you get lost or separated or something like that. Like, don't wait. Just, you know, chime in, and that's that's what these events are for. And like I said, we are live streaming, and we, we won't have a big audience. Like, we just have 13 people watching now. It probably won't be more than a couple dozen people or so watching, but I've been live streaming these for a couple of years now, and uh, this way people from other servers can can watch and and learn and ask questions right along with us. And I want to know, uh, you know, welcome to the live stream for those for those that uh, are just tuning in. I want to know, like, what server you're from, if you've done these raids before. We're doing Vision of Destruction, Tower of Despair, and Epic Chronoscope. Hey, Fidelmo, welcome. Can you hear me okay? She can hear you fine. Okay, cool. Now, I know that you guys are a couple, so did she hear everything that I already said to you like over the last five minutes? I'm not going to repeat it, but I just want to know if, if, she, if she's like right there and heard all of it. No, she was having issues. Okay, cool. Well, happy but to... But she's smarter than me, so uh, chances are she, she knows what to do better than me. I feel you. <laughs> happy to have you, Fidelma. Uh, just briefly what I had just said to folks. I know that this is your first time to one of our teaching rate events. Um, I was just saying how well I get set up for new folks and people who are just learning these raids. And so we're going to be explaining everything. If you have any questions along the way, if you get lost or something, you want more explanation, just let me know. And these are events we do every week, and I'm happy to have you. And I always post details every week of what teaching raid we're doing in the Sarlona forum. So, uh, like I said, tonight is going to be Vision of Destruction in the Subtrain and then Tower of Despair in Shavarath and Epic Chronoscope with the theme of following the Horned Devil, Sulamadis, through all the raids in the game that he appears in. On our way to uh, Vision of Destruction in the Subterrain, I'm going to be giving you guys some tips about navigating your way around there and also showing you how to find Garamel, the giant chieftain rare that uh, is in like a secret lair, kind of. So let's go ahead and step into the subterrain. Before you do, though, You'll want to have, uh, let's see, curse pots. Remove curse pots, which you can get right here from the potion vendor. That's something you should always have with you uh, on every tune. But if you don't have them, be sure to get them from the potion vendor there. And then when you're ready, go ahead and step into the subterrain. Don't, don't, uh, don't move ahead though, because I want all the folks to see what's happening. I want us to stay together. And I want to know, like, if there's any... First, I want to know, like, with the first raid we're doing, Vision of Destruction, is there anybody who's never done it? And I want to know, like, if you're new to the subterrain, sometimes when we do these subterrain events, like, we literally get people who have never stepped foot in the subterrain and know nothing about it. So I want to know, like, if you've done the raid and if you've ever even been down in the subterrain. And I want to know 
I've been in the subterranean trying out uh, the Honda and Zoriat and got flattened in 30 seconds flat. I've never done this raid, but I've been in the subterranean. I want to know the folks watching the live stream too if you've never done, you know, if you've never been in the sub, if you've never done Vision of Destruction. So it sounds like everybody's been in the sub train before. Is there anybody who's who's been down here but doesn't know their way around well? I wouldn't say I know it super well. Okay. You've never been down here. Okay, cool. That is totally awesome. Well, I think the subterrain is a really neat uh, Slayer zone, and there's actually two different zones to it. There's like subterrain central and subterrain east, and it's two different maps with two different sets of explorers and two different sets of rares. And one raid that we're doing tonight, Vision of Destruction, is in the subterrain central, and then the other raid that's down here, which is Heroic Hound of Zoriat. Legendary Hound of Zoria is out there in the marketplace, but Heroic Hound of Zoria is down here in the subterrain east. And going to sh show you a bit about, you know, we're going to show you how to find the Vision of Destruction, open the way, because you got to do some special things to actually open up the way to the raid. Uh, and then going to just explain a little bit about how to navigate down here. It's got some unique features to this place. Okay, looks like we're all here. Let's go ahead and get a few buffs. First, let's uh, step to the edge out here, but don't fall down yet. There's a couple things I want to point out. If you look straight across and to the left, you're going to see these like orange glowing runes on the walls. And if you look down, you're going to see like light shining through from the ceiling that's shining down onto the floor. You'll see a bunch of glowing orange runes on the floor down there, etc. Here in the subterrain, anytime you see runes on the walls, on the floor, uh, light coming through the floor, through the walls, it's all like you want to avoid that stuff if possible because it all does an AOE debuff. It's not a big deal, especially by today's standards, and you're gonna see like this little explosion effect, even if you just like walk next to a rune that's on the wall. You know, like I said, not a big deal. I'm just let, making you aware that that will happen. Now, whenever you're going to most parts of the subterrain, including both of the raids that are down here, what you typically do here is you just jump out and feather fall down to the right to a platform but invariably when you're with a group somebody falls to the bottom and gets lost so what I want to do first is just have us all jump down to the bottom so that you can see what's down there and how to get back up on your own and ex one of those explosions I was talking about just happened when I got near that rune on the wall and actually at the bottom here is, is the first explorer for the subterranean There's going to be living spells down here, living disintegrates, living finger of death, living fireball, stuff like that. You can go ahead and run over the runes so you can see what happens. He's not going to hurt you. And there's actually a rare that can spawn down here. By clicking these runes so if you go on the on the north wall you see there's like a rune here on the wall and you click that rune and it can be trash mobs like it is or there could be a named guy and none of the rares down here have named loot except for garamel and that's the one that we're going to be going to I'm just going to click this rune over here to see if maybe we got no rare. The subterrain over here, and you type again, Nerusi. Oh, 
Oh, Trey, I'm glad you said that. Um, all the treasure bags down here are um, planar shards, the little purple treasure bags. So whenever you see those down here, pick them up, and they can be traded to a guy right there in the center of the market who's with all the vendors for some special rewards, perhaps most significantly a large bag of your choice, a collectibles bag or um, ingredients bag, etc. Gem bag. And you need 150 of those for the for the bags, but don't go through that portal. Uh, which sounds like a lot, but you know, if you come down here and start poking around, I mean, we'll probably get like a dozen on the way to the raid tonight. So when you click a, uh, a rune and a, the red portal comes up like that, that actually will take you to a different location in the subterrain. We're not going to be going through that one, but I just wanted to show you, as opposed to like the like the red and black portal, the darker portal that's over here on the north. That's just like a trash portal. You can't actually go through that. Okay, we're going to go to the other side and start going up. But if you were, you know, if you're doing these raids and you fell down here because you didn't have feather fall or something, you just take these ramps up. show you that there's uh, actually a shrine right over there to the west. There's a lot of shrines in the subterrain, but you know if you don't know way your, your way around, they can be hard to find, but there's one of them. And we're going to double back here and go up this ramp. And right here up the ramp, halfway up the ramp, is another example of one of those runes on the wall that you want to avoid. And then up here at the top, this is where we would have feather fall down to. So if you look up to the right, to the, let's see, southwest, you'll see the hole in the ceiling where we would have dropped down, from, where we originally dropped down from. And now we can go to the east. Okay, so Garamel is a giant chieftain. He's considered a rare, but he's actually always up. He's the only rare that's always up. Uh, and he's the only rare in all of the subterrain that actually has named loot. And his chest has like a whole bunch of different named items, like a dozen different items that can drop. And they have a pretty high drop rate, or at least there's a pretty high chance for you to get some, one of the named items. And so we're going to go there first, and you always start off by going this way. Whether you're going to Garamel or Vision of Destruction or Hound of Zoriat. You always start out going this way. And you gotta kill these two skeletons that spawned in order to unlock this door. As I said, this can be a very confusing slayer zone for people who are newer to it. <coughs> oh wow, that was loud. Um, this is like multi-tiered and stuff. and. Kind of got a confusing map. So if we were going to the raids right now, we'd be going to the right, but we're going to go to Garamel, so it's always left here. And this light is another example of light that you want to try to avoid if you can, because it has the AoE debuff. There's a collectible over here. So if you're going to Garamel, always this way to start. Garamel can actually, he's always up, but his location changes. There are three possible locations that he'll be in. And there are like signs that lead the way, if you know how to read them. A lot of people in this game don't know, you know, that, you know, he's like that. He's always there and that you can always tell how to find him. And this is our first signpost right here, these floating runes. You can see there's runes floating here in the light, it, and you can see there's like a backwards or upside down G thing on the left side. And that's what we're looking for. Think of it as like a G, like Garamel, and whatever side that's on, that tells you which way to go. So if that G had been on the right, we would go to the right here, but it's not. It's on the left, so we would go left. 
to get to Garamel. But I want to go right just to show you, you know, that, that he's not over here and how, and how you could tell. So you have to kill those guys to activate this rune over here. They'll activate the portal. And when it's not Garamel, you just get a trash portal. But if it had been the portal to Garamel, you would see like a swirling blue and green portal. And we're going to go back this way. Now, because the, the, runes, the runes said for us to go left. Here it doesn't matter whether you go up or down, they both just turn the corner. Hey Adam, welcome to the live stream. I'm glad that you like the videos. I appreciate hearing it. There's another collectible back here. And a, and a shrine right here around the corner. And there's going to be a beholder as soon as we open this door. And if you're not aware, you can put uh, a spell absorption item on in order to block a Beholder's anti-magic aura. He's already dead. We're way over level, so we're smoking this. So this is the next signpost to find Garamel. And if there's two things, we're, we're looking for that G again. And there's two different combinations here. One, there could be a G uh, on, like on the right side. I, th I always forget whether it's inside the ring or outside the ring, but it's right there, like in the middle, out, like. On, on it'll inside be on, the ring. It is inside the ring. Okay, thank you. It's it's right in the like in the inside of the ring, on the right side. And if it was there, if that upside down G thing was there, backwards G thing was there, then you would. It's telling you you would go to the right. If it's not there, like now, there's it's just a ring. There's not a separate G thing. Then you would go straight. So Garamel is straight because the G isn't there. But I'm, we're going to go just jump down to the right real quick just so you can see what's down here. Because this is one of the possible ways to Garamel, but just not this instance. And there's another collectible around the corner here. Adventurer's pack behind the Easter Island statue. And then this portal would be, you know, if the G had been to the right, this would be the portal to Garamel's lair, but it's not, so it's just a swirling dark rune, our portal, with trash mobs. Now we're going to go back up. If you look off to the left, you'll see, you know, there's other areas down there, and up to the right, there's stuff. You know, there are different ways you can go, and, uh, you know, there are different rares around here and stuff. Lots of different paths, but like I said, you know, it's really, it can be really confusing because it's, like, multi-leveled and stuff. A lot of different ways to go. So... We're going to go to the third and final location that Garamel can be in. And there's a treasure bag. I'm going to go up the ramp. There's a collectible here, a crude altar. The G is pointing to the right here, but it would always be right. If you ever got to this point, if it ever wasn't the first two, it would always be this way. So you don't really need to worry about that signpost. And then this is the final signpost. The G is on the right side. That's telling you Garamel's to the right. There's a collectible back here, fungus patch. 
But like I said, if, if we got to this point, it would always be this way. Treasure bag by the shrine. Here's a shrine if you need it. We're not going to need it. Um, you click the rune here, and you'll see the portal is the, the green and blue one. We're not going to go into it quite yet. So I know we got some, who's never been, I know one person never been in the subterrain, so that person's never done Garamel before, but anybody else never done Garamel? And I want to know on the live stream, who's never done Garamel? What did you say, Angry Tiger? I did it a bunch of times. I was trying to get the IC Raymonds from them, but I never did. Yeah, that's that. back in the day, that used to be the hot item out of here, and it's the only place in the game to get it. So um, back in when the level cap was 20, this rare was really, really tough. In fact, you would have, there would be LFMs just for this rare, and you'd get entire raid groups, parties of 12 would come down here to fight Garamel and would sometimes wipe. Whole parties of 12 would sometimes wipe against them. Now we're going to obliterate him because we're all level, you know, higher level and stuff, but I'm just saying, like, just for historical context, like, this was a really tough rare back in the day, and I remember farming him with, with pugs, and uh, sometimes it would go really poorly. So when we go through the portal, we're going to appear at the top of a very tall shaft, and we're going to fall down... Like, we're going to be pretty high up. And there's a center column that's going to shoot traps out, acid traps and fire traps and force traps. And if you look down, there's circular rings, like big circles of rings, kind of like the one signpost to Garamel. And you can actually fall through those rings to be safe from the traps. If you fall through, like, the center of those rings and navigate through each of the center of the rings as you're falling, you won't get it by the traps. But... It's not really necessary because, you know, because we're all over level, the traps aren't going to really do much damage to us. So it's really just fastest to just take your feather fall off and fall straight down really quick. But I'm just letting you know, if you, maybe if you ever came in here low level or those traps would worry you, then you can, there's, a, there's actually that way to avoid them. And at the bottom is one of DGO's largest treasure piles. So it's kind of, it's a pretty cool room. There's going to be some giant skellies, and then the rare is always there. He's always going to be up once you find his lair. It's the location of the lair that changes, but he's always up. Two chests, tons of treasure piles to loot, a couple collectibles in there. And there's also another uh, little unique fin thing that happens down there is that there's an anti-gravity effect. You could just get tossed up. And it's, it's a good reason to keep feather fall off because if you have feather fall on, then you know it takes you a while. He throws you way up, and it takes a while for you to come back down. And I want to emphasize this point because a lot of even old time vets are mistaken about what causes you to get flung up in the air. And some people will tell you, and they'll swear six ways to Sunday that it's jumping that causes you to get flung up, but it's not. You can nobody can be jumping, and you can just get randomly flung up. It's just a random effect. They can even happen after Garamal's dead. And I know that it's not jumping because, you know, I've come down here and sold this many times and not jumped and still got flung up. So if anybody ever tries to tell you that it's jumping that causes it, tell them Voodoo said it's not. <laughs> Go ahead and step through the portal. And like I said, if you look down, uh, you can see those rings that you can fall through. And just for the live stream, I'm just going to show you. That you just fall through the middle of the rings, and you, that should avoid the traps. You can see the traps aren't shooting at the inside of the ring. But I'm just going to take my feather fall off. Take that on my boots. Oh, no. That's on my, my clicky. My stance. And there is Garamel, who is always up. So go ahead and take him down. It also doesn't matter where you are. 
the anti-gravity thing will happen anywhere. It's not has nothing to do with the gold piles or the ramp or whether Garamel's alive or not. And go ahead, try it. Jump around. Jumping does not cause you to get flung up. But sometimes you get flung up while somebody's jumping, so that's why people think that that's what causes it. But it's just coincidence. Go ahead and take a moment to loot the treasure piles if you want, and there are a couple collectibles scattered in there. There's like 20 treasure piles. <laughs> this was very exciting when, you know, when we were noobs back in, back in the day. But there isn't anything exciting that drops from these treasure piles. It's mostly just gold, but sometimes you can find like wands and scrolls and things. Looks like there's a purple treasure bag over here in the west. Another collectible. And when you're done having your fun with the gold piles and come on up the ramp, no, I want to make sure nobody jumps at this point because I want you to see that the anti-gravity effect can still happen when nobody's jumping and randomly, even after he's dead. Uh, let's go ahead and get our loot. There's some pretty cool items that would drop even by today's standards. So there's like the the rune arm and the luck blade. Those are both really cool. Like the the luck blade is the only heroic weapon in the game that has three slots on it. So a highly customizable weapon. Flame tongue. Grats, that's what you wanted back in the day, huh? <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, it's not bound anymore. I don't know if you're looking for it for that tune, but it's it's a bind on equip. So if you need to move it, yeah, you can. No, I'm pumped. That's fantastic. That's great. So let's see, we got a lot of named items: the icy raiment, frost brand. Did anybody get a luck blade? Or Tira splendor? Can you link it just so I can show the folks on the live stream? Do you know how to link items? If you're watching the live stream and you don't know how to link items, you just control, you hit control and then you right click the item. So like control and then right click and then it appears in chat. So there's the luck blade. Oops. Uh, it's a level eight short sword and it's got a red, orange, and purple slot and good luck. So that's a pretty neat item. You know, you can really customize that and you can put like ghost touch and a meteor star ruby and you know, good aligned or something like that. You know, it's, it's it's pretty neat. You know, like I said, it's the only heroic weapon in the whole game that has three slots on it. I would venture to say that it's probably a 50% chance that any given named item, that you pull at least one named item when you come down here. It's a very solo bull farm. You can come down here on your own and, and uh, farm out what you want. Yeah, Frostbrand is an old school D and D weapon, and so is the Flame Tongue. And the Flame Tongue—I mean, that's got two slots for a level four weapon. That's, you know, it's kind of neat. You could put Ghost Touch and Meteoric on there or something. Okay, from this point, if you were just farming Garamel, you would just, you know, recall out or detour out. But we're actually going to go through this portal. Just so you can help, you know, get your bearings around here. And just go right through the portal. And this is going to take us to the bottom of the chamber where we first came into the subterrain. Remember, we were clicking those runes to see if there was a rare that would spawn from one of the portals. And then this was the ramp that we took up. Notice that the living spells respawned. But we're just going to go right up the ramp. Uh, any questions about Garamel? Before we move on?
those living spells were also terrifying back in the day. I mean, those meteor swarms shoot at you, it could wipe out half the party, literally. Not so much anymore, but <laughs> back in 2009, it was a different story. <laughs> How long, for those of you who are um, here learning the event, uh, how long have you guys been playing DDO? Treasure bag? We've been playing for about 10 years now. Nice. Longer than me. We haven't really been doing the crafting. Haven't been doing what? You cut off a little bit there. We uh, haven't been doing the crafting though, so a lot of the stuff we've got is just the pickups. Okay. Well, I have some videos about crafting for beginners if you're interested. Check out well, my I've channel. Well, I've been studying them. Thank you. Oh, okay, cool. So just to get your bearings, you know, at that last intersection, we went north to go to Garamel, but uh, we, this is where our, our path diverges from. And went to Garamo. Go ahead and go through this portal. And we're going to go to the left now. Though this is another, oh, treasure bag. This is another portal that could spawn a rare just by clicking the rune. No rare. Just trash. So here we're going to go off to the left. And when you're with a group or someone's new, invariably this is another part where somebody falls. And so I just want to show you, like, I want you to go ahead and fall down here. Because I want you to see, like, if you ever come down here on your own, you know, how to get out. And I want you to see that it's just a small zone down here. No big deal. I don't want you to panic if you ever join a pug and you fall down. Just a little zone, a little trash, a little, little uh, bit of trash mobs. And uh, if you have high jump, you can actually like jump up and catch the ledge here. But uh, I want to show you, if you come to this other side over here, there's a ramp up. There's a couple spots on the way to Vision of Destruction that you know you can fall down and what you don't want to do is start running around lost and confused and because you can spike a dungeon alert and that can make things you know, really irritating for the rest of your party. So you have your bearings. If you look up to the southeast, uh, there, that's where we came through, right up there, the door. Make sure that we're all together. We're getting spread out a little bit, so just gonna hold up here a moment. When we get to the next part, it's very important that we don't start killing stuff. Just leave all, everything, like the uh, the tieflings, in any of the the tieflings are. We need them to help us open the way because there's a there's like a little button that's in a zone that we can't safely go into, but they can. And so we have to like lure them onto the button. Here you go.
go, Mathene. Just jump right up here. Actually, come around this way. I'll show you. Come around this way. I'm, because if you didn't have a high, high enough jump, then um, you, know, you would want to just come around this way. To the ramp up. It's also pretty dark down here, and some people really struggle. Oops, really struggle seeing down here. So you can actually turn your gamma up if that's helpful in your video settings. Some people will turn their gamma up while they're down here. Looks like you don't have a striding item, Athene. <laughs> you walk running around pretty slow. We're not going to go through this next portal. I just want to show you if you were going to Heroic Hound of Zoriat, this is where the path would diverge. So right here through this portal, it would go to Heroic Hound of Zoriat, but we're not going to go there. We're going to hook around to the right. And uh, actually, I want to take the high road first. There are two different paths that people will take. So let's come back this way a little bit. Most groups will take the low road. I'm going to show you the high road because it gives a, a great view of the zone. And we'll come back down and do the low road after you get to see. And there's a couple rares up here that we can check too. Those are my guildies down there. a possible rare right up here, but he's not up. Troglodyte caster. And there's a possible rare up this ramp, and he is up. The rares have a pretty low spawn rate, it seems, in the subterrain. Not as high as some zones, like, like the Veil has like a 50% spawn rate for the rares, approximately, but here it's quite a bit lower, probably somewhere closer to like 25%. Uh, so if you look over the edge, don't fall, but uh, this is where like if you're taking this high road, then you would from here you would jump down, and, but I want you to see that if you look down, there's like, you can see four pressure plates or buttons, and we have to light those up. Those are toggleable just by walking over them. And there's also one in the center, it's, can't really see it, but that red light that's shining up through the floor and like in, in the center of those buttons, that will insta-kill you and there is no save. So you want to make sure that you avoid that whether you're up by the button or whether you're way down there on the floor. So we have to light all four of those buttons and then the one in the center too that you can't really see right now. And we, since we can't go into the light, what we have to do is lure one of the mobs down there through it. So that's why it's really, really important that when you get down there, don't kill, don't kill the mobs until we get all the lights lit, which opens the way. If you killed all the mobs in the zone, and this is one of the things, like, if you get, you know, you join a pug and there's some newbie in the group, they kill everything, and then the leader yells at them because now they can't open the way. 
and the only way at that point would to open the way would be to either reset the instance, you know, recalling out and come back down here, or wait for them to respawn, and you know that could take like 10 minutes. So make sure that if you're going to Vision of Destruction, you light all the lights before you kill the trash. Also, if you look further to the, let's see, the north, you'll see there's like a, a castle-y looking structure, and uh, part of the way down there's like a, a bridge of runes that look like they're floating in the air that leads through like an archway. That's the Vision of Destruction. And you can't see it right now, but there's a flame, it, depending on if your draw distance is set high or not, but there's a flame barrier in front of that archway. Or some kind of barrier, I can't, I can't remember. There's a flame barrier at one point. And any of it, that's what the, the lights will open. And there's actually two different barriers that we have to open. The first one is opened by these lights, and then the next one is opened by a lever that's actually inside of that castle structure. Uh, towards the top. It's actually off to the left. But we're going to go back down and show you the low road that most groups take. So if you are from here, you can just jump way out. So if you're a warlock that has a, a damaging aura, make sure you turn that aura off because we don't want to kill these mobs over here by mistake. Okay, I want to get one person to stand at this button to make sure that it's toggled on. It's on now. We'll just go ahead and uh, let's see. Mathene, go ahead and stand here if you would, please. Where I am. Or Lirinar, that's great. Make sure that stays on. We can kill the devils. They're kind of a pain in the butt the way they teleport around. But don't kill the tieflings. Just make Lirinar stay right there. Make sure that button stays lit. Everybody else can come this way. You'll need to jump. If you fall, don't don't panic. Just kill the trash mobs down there at the bottom, but don't kill the ones at the top. So, uh, let's see. Mathene, if you could stay right there and make sure that button stays lit. And everybody else can jump over this way. I felt you. Okay, no problem. We're gonna I'll show you how to get back up. Just make your way to the northeast of the zone. Don't worry about killing stuff down here. If you look on the well your map's probably not clear, but barrier just went down. Oh okay. Cool. Thank you. Treasure bag. This is another spot where, like, you know, you fall, and if you don't know your way around here, people panic, and then they, they spike a red dungeon alert because there's so much trash down there. You can go ahead and kill stuff because the way is open. The first, uh, the lights, anyways, are lit. Uh, Methine, you can go ahead and uh, head over here. It's like jump down to where I am. I'm right behind you. I headed towards the flame gate, is that alright? Yep. 
I was gonna I'm gonna show some folks the lights though. This is something like this raid is totally soloable, you know, it's just a level eighteen raid. You know, so you could bring like your level thirty in here and probably smash it. Um, but lighting the lights on your own, like if you were to come down here just for fun trying to solo it, it can be a little tricky. You know, so I want you guys to realize what needs to be done. You can see there's five lights here. And you can't touch the red light. I believe you can actually bring your like druid wolf or your arty uh iron defender through it, but I'm not sure if that works anymore. It's been a while since I tried it. But you know, you turn the lights on and if anything else, a trash mob or another party member hits it, it'll toggle it off. So you gotta get all five of these lights lit at the same time for them to stay on and, and, and open the way. And if you touch the red light, you die. Here, I'll show you. No save. <laughs> can, I get, can I get a raise, please? <laughs> Feel free to try it. <laughs> we like to show you what happens when things go wrong. <laughs> um, so if you come over here, and like if you didn't have abundant step or something to get over to that far platform, then what you'd want to do is you'd want to come up over here on these ramps. And by the way, if you ever wanted to get back to the other side, like before we, we like made those jumps, you could just jump right back here and jump back around, but we're gonna we're not gonna go that way. But you could feather fall down from up here onto this platform there to get that light. Alright, we can go over here and start heading to the raid. And you can go across this cool floating platform. Of runes. And there's a shrine on the chest to the west, but we're gonna go up the ramps to get a lever that opens up this flame barrier. Bunch of trash mobs up here. Here's the lever over here that we need to open the way. And this lever can be untoggled, so sometimes you know somebody opens the way and then somebody else comes and closes it. So it's just if that barrier is up, then you know you just need to pull the lever. Here we can go up. I want to show you, get a, give you another bird's eye view of the area. If you already jumped down, no worries. But just I want to help you get your bearings for those who are new to it. You, know, you, look, you can look down on the lights from up here. And if you look sort of straight across to the, if you look up into the like south, kind of south southeast, you can see there's like a window or opening up there. That's where we, when we did that high road and we were looking down, that's where we were. All right, now we can just jump down to the north, and you can shrine up if you want to. There's a shrine in the, in the entry room of the raid though so it's not really necessary to shrine here but if you were totally out of mana and you wanted to like buff people before you use the starting shrine in the raid then you could use this one grab your loot and then just come around the corner to the north So this is a level 18 raid, and it's very soloable. You know, it's level 20 on elite, and it does have some items that are relevant even by today's standards. Most significantly, the Tharn's goggles is a highly prized item, and it is still competitive uh, as a heroic item by today's standards. Which is pretty awesome that you know, 10 years later. 
this item is still good. Probably most of the other items that come here are not as competitive, but Th Tharn's Goggles is definitely awesome. If you were doing this raid on Reaper mode, the highest level that you could do it is level 19, because Epic Tunes cannot get into Heroic Reaper dungeons, so um, just mentioning that. But if you just wanted to do it on Elite, you could come down here on your level 30. Or if you, you know, wanted to do it on normal, like if you're experienced, like if you're coming to come down here, and I encourage you all to solo it, to try soloing it sometime. Or come down here with your friend or your guildies. Go ahead and step in. And, you know, just do it on normal if it's your first time, just to try it out. Uh, it's, this whole raid is just one room after we get out of this entryway. It's just one room. We have to speak to someone at the bazaar. Oh, I will. You just gotta share it. You should be good to go now. Thank you. Yep. The quest giver is right there in the middle of the market. Kind of off to the side from the vendors. So this is the little staging area. There's a shrine here if you needed it. And traditionally what people do is they would line up on the right side and get buffs. And... You know, if you're coming in here on your 30s, you know, like we are, like we're going to totally smash it. But we like to actually do this on a Reaper mode at level 18 for maximum Reaper XP and for fun. So, you know, we come in here and do it on like an R4, R5. We did it on R6 one time. And it can be pretty intense. And when you do it on Reaper mode at level 18, it feels a lot more like this raid did back in the olden days. This used to be a tough end game raid back when the level cap was 20. And groups would wipe even on normal sometimes. And we're not going to have that problem, but when you do this in a reaper mode at level 18, uh, it's definitely challenging. And so, you know, going to be talking about some of the sort of more proper ways to do the raid. But if you are coming in here, you know, and you and your friend are level 30 on your warlocks, you know, you probably just crush it. But we'll go ahead and get a couple buffs. You can turn your warlock auras back on if you turned them off. Ah, somebody watching the live stream just sent me a tell saying that the armor is still pretty good by today's standards, and they are absolutely correct. The full plate of the defender still has really competitive stats by today's standards. Uh, it's pretty high, high armor bonus. Anybody have that armor on them, by the way? And go ahead and step through the portal, but don't move. Thanks for that, Raider. Uh, let's see. Gayfin 3025. When do I stop doing the teaching raids? We will be doing these events through the winter and spring. I guess it's spring now. Happy spring. Uh, so at pretty much every Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern on Sarlona. I post details in the Sarlona forum every week. So you can go there and check out and see what raid we're doing every week. But then we shut them down in the summertime and bring them back next winter. Hey, look, we're a can of sardines. All right, if you look up, you'll see there's the boss, Sulamatis. So he's the star of tonight's event, or maybe the victim. And once we start moving around, the raid will start. But if we stay here and stay still, nothing will happen yet. So first off, uh, so this is the whole raid right here, this room. And the whole raid is just about beating Sully down and fighting our way through waves of trash mobs. And when it first starts, there's going to be four red-named Orthons, which, we're like I said, we're going to crush them. But if you're doing, you know, back in the day, or if you're doing this on Reaper mode, those Orthons can be a little more serious, and you might want to have, like, somebody tank them off to the side and have the party, like, pull one of them off at a time. Which is going to seem funny, because, like I said, we're going to just obliterate them. You know, they're they're no tougher than, like, legendary trash mobs because we're so over level but if you are here at level 18 they will be more serious especially if you're starting to do it at like mid or higher skull reaper and then you'd also ha want to have a proper sully tank if you were doing this at you know at, at reaper at level 18 
and you would need to have somebody who is a pretty serious tank to be able to stand up to him. He will, he will mess you up. He's not going to hurt us, but like I said, if you're doing it at level 18, he's going to be painful. And back in the day, he was painful. <laughs> he is a devil, so his DR is silver and good. Is that right, guys? Yes, I believe that's correct. Okay, cool. And there is a pit of spikes in the middle. You want to stay out of there. Those will hurt you. There's also uh, eight trap boxes. If you look around the room, you'll see that some of the walls are like made of stone, and some of the walls look like they're sort of made out of metal. They have skull heads on them. And there are two trap boxes on each one of the metallic walls, a total of eight trap boxes. And so normally what would happen is, you know, after we cleared out the initial round of trash and we get Sully in place, then a trapper would go do those. But I don't want you to get the traps because I want you to see what happens when you don't get them. I want you to see, like, if you come down here without a rogue or the rogue, you know, the or the trapper, excuse me, or the trapper forgets to get them, I want you to see what happens and so that you know what to do. And what the tank will typically do is grab Sully and then just, you see this little cubby that I moved to right here behind us to the right? And I'm jumping up and down in. Right here is typically where the tank will bring Sully because it's a little cubby he can back into. And then that way everybody else, he's conveniently faced into the wall. And he he won't move around from side to side so much because because the the tank is backed into this little cubby. And then everybody else would just beat on Sully from behind. And when you beat, it, beat it on him from behind, you're taking less damage. Again, not as important because we're way over level. But if you do it at level, that's good to know. All right, we're going to get started. The rest I'll explain as we go. So here come the red name Orthons. Everybody just beat on them. Like I said, if you're doing it at level, you'd probably want to have somebody pull them aside and the party would just beat on them one at a time, but we're just smashing them. And now Sully comes down. Bolo, you want to go ahead and grab him? Thank you. Sure. And once the tank gets him in place, you, you can just beat on him from behind. And he will teleport around periodically when he teleports his aggro resets so what you typically want to do is let the tank reestablish aggro and get him in place before you start attacking him again when you're over level it's not as big of a deal but if you're doing it at level you definitely want to let the tank grab him because if he's running around you know and you're all level 18 he can really cut people down You know, like I said, we also like to show you what happens when things go wrong. So I encourage you, if you've never been down here, to, to go through the spikes in the center and just see what those feel like. It'd be a lot more painful if you're level 18, but, you know. And to put this into context... When we do this at Reaper mode, and we typically do it R4 or R5 every life, it takes us a good, probably a good half hour to do this raid. But all being over level, like we're, we can do it in under 10 minutes easily. And, and, and most of that time will be Sully being up there right now while he's taking a smoke break. And when he's up there on his pillar, he's, he's invulnerable to attacks. We're just going to get waves of devils. If you're doing it at level, then mass charms are great. Mass holds are great. Charming a reaper, if you're doing it on reaper mode at level 18, if you can get like a plague or especially a carnage reaper charmed, just start beating on Sully. That's really helpful. And back in the day when the level cap was 20, I remember this raid lasting an hour sometimes. So 
So what's going to happen because we're not doing the trap boxes? There's going to be spinny blades all over the floor that'll come out for about a minute. When that happens, you just want to run to one of the cubbies. There are cubbies all around the sides, like the one the tank's in. He's just run. Those are safe spots. Sometimes Sully just sort of spaces out and just stands there for a moment. It's like free hits when he does that. And when the tank has him placed like this, go ahead and just beat on him. And there are the spinny blade traps. Get into a cubby. Any one of the cubbies will do. And if you're a trapper, you can, and you're adventurous, you can jump out and do the trap boxes now. And you can jump out into the spinny blades and see what those feel like if you want. But I want to show you that, you know, if <laughs> if this comes up, because a lot of people, you know, sometimes will do this raid and, they, and they'll see this and be freaked out. They're like, w when did this start happening? They've never seen it because trappers always got the traps. So, you know, we like to show you what happens when things go wrong. So if you ever see this, this means trappers didn't get the traps. There are eight trap boxes, and each trap box controls, you know, like two or three of these things. So, you know, if you, sometimes trappers will miss, like, one of the boxes or blow up a box, and then just two of these blades will come out, for example. One of the people watching the live stream said that the first time their guild did this, it took over two hours. I, I remember a normal run going over an hour back in the day. But the spinny blades will go back into the floor after about a minute. They go away regardless of if you get the boxes or not? Yes, they will go away after about a minute regardless. Somebody in the live stream is asking if there's a, you know, like, what do you do if there's a wipe? Well, if you don't have Jibber's Blade, Nothing. <laughs> you recall out, you try again tomorrow. But if you got a gibber's blade, then you know, there's a little trick with the gibber's blade that if you if you hit it and don't move, a lot of times you won't aggro the mobs around you so that you know you can hit your gibber's blade off into a side and then start throwing raises at people and if they don't move, a lot of times the mobs won't aggro on them either that's sort of a way that you can get reset and you sometimes have to do that on Reaper mode this is a very serious raid on Reaper if you're doing it at level and you have to pretty much have to do it at level because like I said the highest level you could do it on Reaper mode would be 19 because the epic level tune cannot get into a heroic Reaper dungeon Right, gamer. The uh, if you know somebody had a way to self-res, then you know, that would work too. I forget about that sometimes because I don't play any of the destinies or classes that have self-raising ability. see Sully still up there taking a break and he's gonna shoot at you with chain lightning and delayed blast fireballs while he's up there and those are really painful that's another thing like I tell people when we're in here on R4 or R5 I tell them like if you have less than 500 hit points you're likely to get one shot by those chain lightnings and delayed blast fireballs they're extremely painful so it's a really good idea to have some sort of you know at least resistance to those if not you know fire shield or something
that's a, the person is asking, you know, what about a cake? You cannot use Sybaris Spirit Cakes in raids. So that would not be an option. If there was a wipe. So the second round of Orthons is up now. And I'll also mention that uh, when Sully gets down to 55,000 hit points, and these events are triggered by hit points, when he gets down to 55,000, there's going to be a round of fire detonator bats, I think they're called. And back in the day, they would like, they're like they like kamikaze bats that explode on impact, and those would be terrifying back in the day. Like You would want to have fire shield and throw mass heals, and they could wipe parties right at the end. They're not a big deal, definitely because we're over level, but even at level now, they're, bats not, are about to come out. they're not a big deal. But the bats themselves aren't. But the bats never stop spawning until Sully's dead. And with each wave of bats, Reapers can spawn if you're doing this on Reaper mode. So that becomes actually about the most challenging part of this raid on Reaper mode is dealing with all the Reapers that spawn during these final bat waves. And... You know, it could take a couple of minutes to beat Sully down on Reaper mode from once he gets 55,000 down to zero. That could take a couple of minutes. So if, you got to, if you're dealing with like a couple minutes of bat waves, you could easily get four or five Reapers during that time, which can be devastating because at that point in the raid, you're down on resources. Maybe there's some attrition, etc. So the point is the end of the raid with the bats is the toughest part because of all the Reapers that can spawn. Alright, if you have any questions about the raid, let me know. Otherwise, we're going to move on to the next one after we loot. And there are three chests. Lagging. We're lagging a little bit on this side. Yeah, I think we all are. cloak not the greatest by today's standards but does that performing charisma 6 on it so d20 if anybody wants it there's a sword in here that's kind of unique let's see if anybody got it I don't remember the name of it but what's unique about it is in the hands of a paladin it has a bunch of abilities that show up for paladins only, and depending on how many p levels of paladin you have, like a full, like a 20 paladin will have all the abilities, but if you're not a 20 paladin, it will only have some of them. And it's not a bad sword for heroics, from what I understand. This omniscience, you know, is, well, it used to be cool. I guess it's not too bad. Tharn's Bracers, that's part of the Tharn set. How do you roll a die? I'll show you. You would type slash roll space D and then whatever it is. D100, D20, whatever. Yep. What's the D ninety nine? That was me trying to type out how to make a roll and I missed the button. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the D one hundred was for omniscience and I have two of them so I'm gonna give them to the two high rollers which are methine and angry tiger anyone for the shield there you go guys mm -hmm. thank you and the d50 or no d5 I don't think there was a D500. Oh, it was for the shield. Yeah, for the shield. And 
looks like nobody wanted the bard cloak. After this, are we meeting back in the marketplace? Okay. Um, looks like nothing for the shield, eh? Yep, you're welcome. Okay, guys, go ahead and recall right, out. It's in, it's in the strong box. It's in front of Wooter. Nothing. Yeah, Robert, you could do a D1 million. <laughs> Any D you want. Uh, when you recall out, you'll be right there in the center of the market. Nothing. Make sure that you turn in the raid. Look, just looking for items with green slots on it. Whoops. I'm standing uh, over at the quest giver to turn it in. Just north of the vendors. Did something happen with the loot? Um, yeah, it stayed in the chest. <laughs> oh, oops. It happens. Um, When you roll on a chest, it stays in the original chest that it appeared in. And so um, when it comes up again, then you just go to the chest that the original person left it in and you'll get it. Yeah, it has to be, so it has to be passed in the chest because those items, they bind once you grab them. So it's not like, you know, Wooter couldn't loot it and then give it to you. You have to grab it out of the chest. So when you're doing raids... Right, and I can't get it again because it's already passed. So when, you, when you're doing raids, you know, that's what... You know, typically, if somebody doesn't want an item, you know, well, a lot of times they'll just roll it off to the group. And then they just switch it over to whoever wins the roll, they switch it over in the chest. And you loot it out of the chest. Um, for the next raid, we're going to be doing Tower of Despair. And I know there are some people who didn't get flagged for that, so um, that's cool. Um, and we're going to be doing After Tower of Despair, which will probably take us about a half an hour. We're going to be doing uh, Epic Chronoscope. So if you have to bow out, all good. If you want to come back for Chronoscope, let me know. You just send me a tell in like a half an hour. Um, otherwise, you know, like I said, I know some people are going to be bowing out now. And appreciate you coming for VOD. And everybody who's staying, we're going to be doing Tower of Despair in just a few minutes. Thanks for joining us, Mathene. Do we have time for a quick break? You sure do. In fact, why don't everybody, why don't we go ahead and take a, you know, take a five minute break and then we'll do, we'll do VOD, I mean TOD, Tower of Despair, in five minutes. If anybody has any questions during that time, let me know. Any of the folks watching the live stream, you have any questions, let me know. Raids cannot be red boxed, Robert. They have to be flagged for. Um, some raids don't have any flagging, though. Most do, but some don't. Like the one we just did, Vision of Destruction, doesn't have any flagging. So as long as you're level appropriate, then you can just walk right in there. Uh, Heroic Hound of Zoria and Legendary Hound of Zoria don't have flagging. Epic Chronoscope doesn't have flagging. Tempest Spine doesn't have flagging. I think, oh, and uh, one of the new raids, uh, Riding the Storm Out, doesn't have flagging. Yeah, Chronoscope doesn't have flagging. I think all other raids have some sort of flagging mechanism. You know, it could be something really simple, like killing some red name rares out in a Slayer Zone, like for the Thunderhome raids, or it could be something much more complex like running you know three 
chains, you know, like running like 12 quests in three different chains like you have to do for flagging for like Caught in the Web or Curse of Strahd. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you said that, Angry, because I think there are some folks here that are going to need boot ingredients. Heroic and epic chronoscope has no flagging, Robert. And the hero heroic chronoscope is just like level six on normal, I believe. But you got to be twenty to get into epic. And chronoscopes, need that's an easy one to solo farm. You know, if you're just wanting like the base items. You know, just go in there on Heroic, take your over-level tune in there. I mean, you can even, you can solo the Epic one, too. All these raids we're doing tonight are very soloable. Looks like i got a roll that's ready to go. Save those healing elixirs. Is there anybody who wants an uh, invitation to the guild ship to get uh, high level ship buffs? If you do, let me know. tip for you guys watching the live stream that if you're into sentient weapons if you ha haven't thought about this little trick yet you can what I like to do is make a bound to account sentient weapon like this coffin nail here just to keep in the shared bank so that you know if I, if I loot bound stuff like on voodoo here like voodoo's sentient weapon is already maxed out I can't feed it anymore so I keep a bound to account sentient weapons so that I can pull out on whatever tomb I'm on and then just like if I pull like, you know, like bound to character loot that I couldn't just throw in the character bank or in the shared bank, then I can just pull that sentient weapon out of the shared bank more, and feed it. The more we do that, the better it is for both of us. And then pop that weapon back in the shared bank. This flame tongue is going to be a prize in my upcoming Easter hide and seek and trivia event on Sarlona be posting the video and information about that probably Monday. Check this out. I pulled this last night. I was pretty pleased. This Voodoo wears this at level 17 and so I was pretty happy to get this out of good intentions. Uh, this Hardened Hide Armor which has Mythic 2 and Reaper 3 on it. I thought that was cool. There's all my mysterious remnants. <laughs> A few extras. Not in the spend them on them anymore. I wish they'd come out with plus three tomes. So if you're watching the live stream, three items I just pulled out 
are, or the four items I just pulled out are what's needed to make your boots of anchoring, which are these things right here that just have anchoring on them. They make it so that you can't be banished out of the raid. The boss for Tower of Despair and Cash banis Banishment. Actually, has it, what he does has a different name to it, but it's it's functionally banishment, and he can send you right out of the raid, like suddenly you're just in the marketplace if you fail your save against the spell. So this, these boots prevent him from doing that to you. It's definitely a good idea to have this before you go into the raid, but if you don't, you can use like spell absorption. And even the new, for, for whatever reason, the new ban hammer has that anchoring effect. It's the only other item in the game... Uh, besides the boots of anchoring that have that anchoring effect. Kind of weird that they added it to that item. This was from the 12th anniversary party, but you can see at the bottom there above the red slot it says anchoring. So, <laughs> not sure what that was all about. Yes, you do. So, uh, let's see. Arusi, Angry Tiger, and Larinar, are you guys back? I'm back. I'm back. Larinar, are you with us? Okay, cool. Just making sure everybody is present and accounted for before we start. Uh, so, yeah, you do have to talk to someone, but before we go there, is there... So I want to know who's n new to Tower of Despair, who's never done it, or if you've done it a few times and are still learning it. I've never done it. We just started. Okay. Uh, but you flagged for it, so you know how to get to Shavrath. So go ahead and make your way out to Amrath which is the floating floating city above Shavra. So if for for the live stream, you know, you can just go to your ship captain if they have the Amrath selection there. That's how you get there, but I want to show you the old school way to get there. Just in case, you know, you don't have a guild ship with this. Uh, that you don't have a guild ship with with that to get to to Shavrath. There is another way in the game to get there, and that is through the twelve here. And you go to the back room. And you go to this cool fire shifter changer or chamber or whatever, uh, and you say, uh, I need transportation. And there are three destinations Lamania and Delur are non functional. Those were places that they were planning on adding at one point, apparently, but never did. The only option that actually works is Shavrath. And then he sends you to, sh to Amrath. So I need to know who was not a... I know some of you I talked to, like in, in mails and stuff, that you weren't able to make your boots of anchoring prior to the raid. But we have extra ingredients, so who does not have their boots of anchoring or doesn't know how to make them? Those things. In fact, everybody who's new here, go ahead and, uh, and link your boots if you got them. I just want to make sure you got them with you. Okay, Lirinar, do you have any of the ingredients, or do you need them all? The ingredients are... Okay, cool.
So those are the four ingredients that you need to make a Busa Inkring. And the way that you do that is just by, I'm going to give these to you, and you just talk to Leela here, and she just tell her you want to trade those for boots or something like that. So one of her dialogue options says, I have heard something about Boots of Anchoring, can, can you tell me more? And just click on that and perfect. I also want to show you guys that the Banhammer that came from the 12th anniversary event, for some reason, has the Anchoring ability on it, which is, it's the only other item in this game that has Anchoring besides the Boots of Anchoring which was I thought was kind of funny. It's kind of a weird addition to you know birthday 12th anniversary but it, you know, but, you know, that's that's also an option. And if you if you were doing this raid and you didn't have, you know, you absolutely couldn't get the boots of anchoring or something, you can always just use spell absorption to avoid the banishment effect. This guy right here is the raid giver. Okay, let's gather by the portal at the top of Amrath. If you're totally new to Amrath and you didn't know, you can always just jump off the side to get back to the top. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to climb your way back up there. Sometimes it can be a little confusing. You get turned around. If you jump off the side, it'll just teleport you back to the top. And if you have the selection, an image of the secret entrance to the Tower of Despair, that's what you want. But if you have never been there before, then you won't have that. You'll only have an image of the Devil Battlefield. So if you have an image of the secret entrance of the Tower of Despair, go ahead and click on that. But if you don't, then we're going to have to run out. So I need to know who doesn't have that. I don't have, that. I don't have it. Okay. Lirinar and Fidelma? I don't have it. Uh, I don't think the Delma is, is up. Yeah. <laughs> I remember those days, Raider. Um, Lirinar, do you have that option? Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, I want every, I want you guys to all drop group and then High Lords will meet up with you. You know how this works. So drop group and I'll invite you because we can't enter this, you can't enter the Slayer zone if you're in a raid group. So go ahead and drop group. Yeah, you can't, you can't, a raid party can't enter the Slayer Zone. I couldn't just convert it. Alright, go ahead and step into the Devil Battlefield. Alternatively, what could have done is like somebody who was there could use a bracelet of friends to just teleport you guys over, but I wanted you guys to see like how to get there. I know some of you are new to this. Just follow me. Just takes about a minute to run there. There's your tier two green steel crafting device. You can run by those guys.
And off to the left, if you have a decent jump, you can just get over the wall right here. And then jump straight over the wall. If you don't, we're going to open up that gate here in a second. So, no big deal. As long as one person gets over, you're good to go. And the gate is open. Sometimes there's a rare here. But we're going to head to the north. There's a rare up over there. I think it's a gate smasher. It's one of the golems. Demon crasher or demon crusher or gate smasher. If you're watching the live stream, I do have a, a video that has like a tour that's a tour video of the double battlefield, and I show the location of all the quest entrances all of the rares and all the explorers. Three different rares can appear here when we got the devil. There isn't any named loot that drops from the rare chests. And then the Tower of Despair is right over here. Or at least the back entrance. If you look up, you can see the Tower of Despair. There it is. And just go over here. Guys, do you know if Menon's coming back for this? I don't see him down here. Uh, no idea. Okay. Oh, he's here hiding. He's up on the balls. Hey, dude, I didn't see you up there. You're so tricksy. I was hidden. Everybody left the party. I didn't know what happened. <laughs> We're just running out. Uh, so if you just made the run with me, talk to Ranar, the Yugoloth scout here, and say, I think I, I took a... Or something like, I may need to get back here, or something like that. I'm, and yeah, I may need to return here in the future. Okay, yeah, I may need to return here in the future. Click that, and that's what's going to open that portal to let you come right here, so you won't have to make that run again. And then if you want to actually go back to Amrath, you can just click, I think I took a wrong turn, can you get me back to Amrath quickly? We are going to go into Tower of Despair. On Elite. It's a level 20 raid. Level 22 on Elite. Right. Uh, hold on. Uh, Fidelma's back at the portal again. Okay. Uh, Fidelma should be able to just click on the portal and click a secret entr entrance to the Tower of Despair. Hopefully. Is she able to do that? She's running there herself. Is she having to make the run again? Looks like she's making the run again. <laughs> okay, does, if she needs a guide, I can guide her. It's no big deal. No, she's good. Okay. She must have clicked the wrong thing when she was talking to Renard. <laughs> Oh, 
for everyone else, we go through that uh, the little glowy balls, right? Uh, the entrance is at the bottom of the stairs. So when I started playing DDO, uh, this was like the end game raid, and um, the ring, there are rings that come out of here, and they were like, they were awesome back in the day, but they're not so spectacular anymore. So a couple of them can be, you know, decent. They're level 18 raid uh, rings, and they can be made like decent for like level 18 or 19, but probably wouldn't, you know, if you were going to use them, probably not worth using into epics, even low epics. And maybe maybe for like one or two of them, but overall probably not worth farming for these days. If you don't, but you know if you. If it was, at the tower video. You know. It was you know it's the kind of thing like if it was already if you already had it you know it might be worth using for a couple levels. Welcome back. Go ahead and step into the raid at the bottom of the stairs. You don't need to be wearing your boots of anchoring yet. You can wear your normal boots. We don't need to use the boots of anchoring until the very last part, and I will remind you. But if you don't have those, the boss can literally uh, banish you right out of the raid and you'll suddenly be in the marketplace and you'll be like why the heck am I in the market and you can't get back in you actually can step back, step back in the raid and get completion but there's a lockout there's like a barrier that'll come up so you wouldn't be able to get to the chest Can you c c still craft the prestige sets? As far as I know, none, nothing has changed in terms of TOD crafting. In terms of what you can craft. So yeah, all those prestige sets, like they're still, th you know, you could still craft them. They're probably not worthwhile anymore, but you can still make them. All right, uh, let's go ahead and buff. You don't need uh, GH out here in Amrath. That is an environmental effect. But I think that the uh, environmental effect may not include the fear immunity, even though it says. Or I feel like there's something missing from the Shavaroth effect that you don't get. Or that you. Yeah, that you don't get compared to like the regular GH. Okay, let's go. This is more of an explain as you go kind of a raid. A couple trash mobs up here. And there's a bar little barrier that'll come up just behind us once the raid gets started. And right here is this is like the staging area. Like it, most groups will will gather right here before they start. Just past the lockout point, and you know you do you buff up right here. So everybody who's new, come on down this way, and you're going to get to see a little movie. You're going to see uh, Eretricos from the Shroud, and you'll see the first two zone uh, part or the first parts bosses, which is the Jailer and the Judge. And you'll see Horoth, the end boss, and they're all going to be down there, and, and you're going to watch part of the storyline unfold. So you pull that lever to get things started. Once you pull that lever, it will lock the raid, and you can watch it.
Tricos. This is the source of so many people asking for like a mini or a Tricos as a cosmetic pet for so long. We finally got it, what, last year or something? I don't know the details of the storyline, but if you're interested in that kind of thing, it you know basically like after the shroud, for whatever reason, Eretricos is helping us. I think maybe because he thinks that he's going to become the new commander or something and take Horas' place. In any event, he's like helping us, and then Horas stops him in his tracks and turns him into mini Eretricos. And Now we're going to fight our way to the first part, where we fight the first couple bosses, the Jailer and the Judge. Maybe some Trash Mobs, some Devils, Orthons, Vizikira, Troglodytes. Try not to fall off these platforms. I don't know if there's a good way out if you fall. I think somebody might have to jump down and D-door you out. Uh, I want you to look up and just see that, like, we this is where we just saw the little movie play out. So if you look up to the west, you'll see the little viewing box that we were in. And we're going to part one, which is to the north. But then later on, we're going to be coming back through this part again. When we go to part two, we'll be going up the stairs this way. But for now, we have to go to part one first. Just pull this lever and go to the north. Can you do it in any order, or is it always the same? You have to do it. You have to do this part first. And here, we just jump down the pit. The spikes won't hurt you. They look menacing, but they actually are just just uh, a visual. Don't move once you get to the bottom. This is another raid that, like back in the day, was really tough. But like VOD by today's standards, like you like you can smash it. So if you come in here in a group just doing it regular, you're probably just going to, you know, do do whatever. You know, it's just going to be a free for all. But if you're ever doing it at level, or like, or you know, you were doing it like on Reaver mode, um, there are some things to be aware of. Uh, one is that there is going to be like an anti-gravity effect. Like the judge, I don't know if they both do it or what, but one, one or both of them can like fling you up into the air. And when that happens, you can get tossed into like these spikes that are in the wall and in the corners and things. And those can be pretty deadly if you're lower level or if you have low, maybe like low hit points, low PRR. Everybody here should be fine, though. And once we step forward, the Jailer and the Judge will activate. The Judge is a horn double, just like Sulamadi's was. We'll see Sulamadi's later on the raid. And the Jailer is an Orthon. Their DR is going to be silver and magic. Or silver and good. And there's going to be trash mobs. There's going to be some uh, hellhounds and some fire elementals. So if you're doing it at level, it would be great to have trash people. Maybe some insta-killing casters work great. And then, once we get things started, after a couple of minutes, if you look to the right and the left, you'll see, like, and behind us, actually, there's, like, these big bay doors, these garage door-looking things. And those will open up into little rooms. And I actually like to take the bosses into those rooms, even though you're standing in lava, but, you know, the lava doesn't do that much damage by today's standards. Because if you're in those little rooms, when they do their anti-gravity flinging, you just get tossed into the little ceiling and you bounce right back down. Whereas if you're out here and they do that to you, you get thrown way across the zone. So just kind of as a matter of convenience, I like to take the bosses into the cubby. If you're doing it at level, 
you would probably want to have a separate jailer tank and a separate judge tank. And you would definitely want a proper tank for the judge. It's great to have a proper tank for the jailer too, but you know, could also be a lesser tank or maybe somebody kiting him around or something. And your leader might tell you like to tank the judge in a certain spot and then the jailer in a certain spot. You know, back in the day, people would take the, you know, often take the judge down to the left. I mean the jailer down to the left and then the judge over by the, the gate that leads out of here, which is off ahead of us to the left. You can't really see it right now, but but the bottom line is that you know wherever your leader would tell you to take them, that's what you'd want to do. And have a look up and around. You can see that's uh, kind of neat looking up there. There's some prison cells and things. If you get tossed up, you can actually get tossed up onto some of that stuff if if you get to tossed just right. All right, any questions before we get started? There's going to be some spinny blade traps, too. You'll want to try to avoid those, but it won't be any big deal by today's standards. And let's go ahead and take these guys down. There's the anti-gravity effect. Uh, we'll take these guys down to the south. Just drag the, everything down to the south. And he does this chaining effect. Sully does this chaining effect too in VOD. I didn't get a chance to show that, but slows you down. So we're just going to bring them together. If you die in this part, you cannot be raised until this part is over. You get sent to the penalty box which is a little cage to the east. So try really hard not to die in this part. If you're doing it at level and you know, and you're under you know, you're short staffed then a couple of people dying can get make things get pretty serious. So the little side rooms are open now, take them in there. And now when we get flung, hopefully we just get tossed up into the ceiling and not way across the zone. Oh yeah, forget about that. I don't do Devil's Assault very often. Man, I still got tossed. Or not. Man, I was standing in the wrong spot, I guess. So this guy does curse, and it's I believe it's the kind of curse that prevents you from getting healing, so really important to remove your curse. And that is the end of part one. We're going to go upstairs, look to the right, and there's the cage there in the east. That's the penalty box when you die. But we're going to keep going up. And you have to talk to, you have to pull this lever, and that lever opens up the penalty box to let people out. You can't pull that until this part's over. And then here's Mini Eritricos. And you talk to him, and you make a pact with him, and he gives you the passphrase to get into part two. And then we go this way. And you can shrine up if you want to, and there are two chests. No named loot drops from these chests. And then we keep going, part two. We're gonna fight our way there, some more trash mobs. Would 
you say this is one you could solo, or is it pretty tough? It's definitely soloable. I would consider this maybe a more intermediate raid to solo. Like, if you've never soloed raids, this is probably not the one you want to try first. I mean, you could. I mean, I encourage you to come in here, you know, try it on normal just to see if you can do it. And if you do it on normal, then, you know, bump it up next time. Uh, so this is, we're going right back through the way we already came. This flame barrier is over the pit now that we drop down into part one. But if you're new to soloing raids, you know, I would encourage you to start with raids like Demon Queen, Vision of Destruction, Reaver's Fate. Uh, those are great raids to start with soloing and then work up to maybe like Tower of Despair and Sh Heroic Shroud and maybe like Epic Chronoscope. Or you could even solo hero a chronoscope over level, you know, just to get a feel for it and stuff. All right, this is part two, and once we move forward, the Shadow Master and Ethereos is going to spawn up on that those stairs up ahead. And then he's going to, there's going to be all these other big shadows that come out too. They look like shadowy horn devils. Or maybe shadowy pit fiends, whatever the case. Yeah, actually, Netherios is a pit fiend. And back in the day, this part... This isn't where we put on our boots, is it? No, no, no. Back in the day, this part was really terrifying. Uh, because if the shadows got loose, they could wipe a party really, really quickly. Um... So the sort of proper way to do this is for everybody to go up and fight Netherios at the top of the stairs in a big group, and the healers would throw mass heals, and then there would be one person designated to deal with the trash uh, shadows and to keep them off of the party. And so there are two methods that were traditionally used. One is that a person would kite them. Uh, often it would be a caster that would throw like an ice storm or something at the base of the steps that would, you know, that way if any shadows were to go up there, they would hit the AoE and then aggro on the caster, which was kiting them around a big circle in this zone. You know, or like a like a favorite soul or something could use blade barrier and put it at the steps. And uh, you would typically want somebody who could run really fast because if it was somebody with sort of a slower run speed, the shadows would, would get you. You needed to be able to run fast in the shadows, like at least have haste. Alternatively, what's an old school way to do it was to be to tank the shadows at the bottom, and if so somebody had decent cold absorption and cold resistance, they could just keep firewalls and things up at the base of the bottom of the steps and just tank all the shadows. And one of the tricks with that is you want to stand still when you're tanking them, because when you're moving through them, that's when they start ticking for damage really fast. But if you're standing still and not actually moving through them, they don't tick for damage very fast at all, and you actually take very little damage. And it would be great to have like the red fire shield for that. So if you were doing this at level or you're doing this on Reaper mode, then you would probably want to do one of those old school methods. Uh, but we are just going to go up to the top of the steps, all of us, and just get in a pile and just smash Netherios. So the sh couple of shadows came up here, and you can see that you know we we were able to just destroy them with our AOEs really quickly. But back in the day, when the level cap was 20, that probably would have been wiped the party right there. The shadows were not easy to kill, and they would do a ton of damage. We were talking about soloing raids, and I actually have a video that talks about like learning to solo raids. It's on my channel. But you know, some of these older raids, like BOD or TOD, that we're doing, 
like it can be impossible to find groups for. So with some of the older ones like that, that's one of the reasons why it could be valuable to like learn to solo a raid like Vision of Destruction or Tower of Despair. Like if you're looking for your Tharn's goggles, for example, you know, it might just be you down there trying to get it or you and a friend. And that's it for part two. Let's go through this door in the back. And there's a Yeah, I find it really hard to get groups for raids. Yeah, the older raids especially. Pull this lever. There's a network of halls that go all around the zone we were just in. That's where the shadows come from, by the way. But it's just a hall that, like, an outer hall that forms a ring around it. And we're going to go upstairs. We're actually going to go right above where we're fighting Ethereo. So once we get up top, you can look down and look over the zone that we were just in. There is where we're fighting the Therios. Be very careful not to click on the portal that leads to the third part. With the shrines being right next to the portal, it's very easy to click on the sh on the portal by mistake. So try very hard not to do that. So we have some named items in this chest, and some items that are still relevant by today's standards. So Nyoko's necklace that fell has three invisibility clickies. There's also another necklace that has like a GH, an 18 minute GH clicky, so that's kind of nice. There's also the dancing belt, a highly prized belt by pranksters because this is how you dance other other players. Bola, well, let's see if we can dance each other. Any of the High Lords, if you have a dancing belt, we'll show you guys. I have to recharge mine. I've already tried dancing you three times and I didn't. <laughs> Nice. Me too. <laughs> there it is. I got him first try. So if you like pranking your friends, it can be funny to make them dance. So in High Lords, we do this to each other all the time. Like, and we love to do it like when the tank is tanking the raid boss, make them dance or something like that. You actually get points around High Lords for doing stuff like that. <laughs> Some people hate that kind of stuff, but in, in my guild, it, that kind of behavior is encouraged. <laughs> Sometimes it's amazing we get anything done because we're always trying to blow each other up and grease each other and dance each other. <laughs> I think the funniest is still when I tried to dance voodoo as he went into the quest that was still outside the quest, so I ended up dancing myself. Yeah, if you lose target, if you lose your target for some reason or you have yourself targeted, you can make yourself dance. So we got some named loot as well as some shroud crafting ingredients here. anybody wants the Anne Velsing's belt. So Lirinar looks like you got the Mars. All of the items, by the way, that drop in this chest drop from the flagging quests. So this isn't the only place to get a dancing belt, for example. They're actually, I can't remember which ones, but a couple of the flagging quests also drop it. All right, looks like Lirinar wants Ann Belsings. There you go. Okay, put your boots of anchoring on now. I highly recommend that you put your boots of anchoring on before you even step foot into part three. Ideally, you can go in there and you know everybody can buff up. Um, but the thing is, with you know, favored souls and warlocks have auras of menace, and it's it's what can happen is you know the boss can aggro right away because of those auras, and if that ha you know I've seen it happen where people step in and they get banished immediately. It didn't happen very often, but you know I'd seen it happen back in the day. So that's what I'm saying. Like just for to be safe, put on your boots of anchoring or your spell absorption if you don't have boots of anchoring before you even click on this portal. If you ever clicked on this portal by mistake, you know, when you like you were trying to shrine, and you clicked on the portal by mistake, you can, if you don't move, you can type slash stuck, and it will take you back to the previous zone. So this is the end fight, and you could see Horoth, the boss, up there with his devil council, 
And right now, what's going to happen is they're going to read him the riot act. Like, how could you let these outsiders get into the Tower of Despair? You're so incompetent, you fool, take care of it, is the gist of what the conversation is. And so after they have their little dialogue, uh, they're all going to take off. And then Horath is going to be, uh, he's going to jump down and we're going to be fighting him. And then, and what you want to do is have a tank pull him, off, pull him off to the side. And usually the tank will like back up between the thrones on the left or right. And that's a nice little cubby. And that way everybody else can attack Horath from the side, from behind. While that's going on, there's going to be Orthon trash mobs that spawn, so it's great to have a trash person assigned an insta-killing caster works great, but, you know, anybody that can take care of trash is fine. There's also going to be some portals that, that spawn in the back left and right, where you see the symbols on the wall. And you can beat those down to, like, stop the trash mobs from spawning, but the portals just respawn anyway, so there isn't really any practical value in beating down those portals. So you just leave them up, we just ignore them, and just beat down the trash as it spawns. Also, when anybody dies in this part, Horoth regenerates some of his health. And so when you're doing it on a lead or higher, he actually gets back like half of his health when a person dies. So if you were in here with a squishy group, you know, say you're doing it at level and somebody keeps dying, like this part can become incompletable. And I remember back in the day that being a very serious issue. So if you were ever doing this at level on Reaper or something like that, make sure that you are aware of that, and that if there's somebody who's particularly squishy that's dying, maybe you might want to have them like stand off in a safe spot. Because people keep dying in here, you know, like I said, Horoth is just going to keep regenerating, and you'll never kill him. <laughs> Once Horoth is beat down to, like, I think 70% health, then Sulamadis appears. He's the... He's the, the the star of the tonight's event that we killed in Vision of Destruction. Sulamadis is actually Horoth's like first general or something, or his lieutenant, or I forget his title. So we're gonna break. Then everybody except the Horoth tank is gonna break off and beat on Sully. They'll just pull Sully aside, put one of these back corners, and just beat on him. Uh, Sully is actually an optional. You don't have to kill him, but most groups are going to kill him because I think you get a little XP and you do get an extra chest out of it. If you're doing it at level, you'd want to have probably a proper tank dealing with both Horoth and Sully. Being over level, not as big of a deal, especially with Sully. You could just have the groups around him. So, Horoth tank tanks Horoth off to the right. Uh, trash mobs will spawn, Orthons, Sully appears when Horoth is at 70% health, and everybody goes on Sully. When Sully's dead, everybody's back on Horoth. If, for some reason, Horoth is killed before Sully is, then Sully just takes off. He's like, I'm out of here. And uh, he just runs away. It's actually kind of funny. And then you just wouldn't get the extra chest. Any questions before we start? Somebody in the live stream is saying that they remember when the belts were best in slot and game gear. I remember that too. I mean, the rings and the belts out of here were like, and they there were sets, and you were just you were the you were a baller if you had had those sets going. All right, let's do this. Remember to hope you hopefully you get your boots on. And oh, you can watch the dialogue if you look up. I always wanted to make them this epic, and when I, when, I can't remember, was it, there's the, the Defiler of the Just Raid and those flagging quests, when that was coming out, I thought, you know, it was like, oh, that, Sh Amrath is finally going epic, and I thought, oh, you know, be, I couldn't wait for, I thought, epic Tower Despair, you know, and I'd always imagined that we would get to fight all five of these guys at once, but, nope. I can still dream about that, that maybe someday they'll make like a legendary Tower of Despair and we'll have to fight all five of these guys at once. That'd be so cool. Um, Bolo, if you could tank Horoth, that'd be cool. But I want everybody just 
everybody get on him. I want you to see what it, what Elite Horoth feels like. You know, for those of you who express interest in possibly soloing this, you have to deal with him on your own. So get in front of him and see what his hits feel like. In fact, let's just keep him here until Sully appears, and then Bolo, once Sully appears, you can pull Horoth off to the side. Horoth does di right. disease, curse, and poison attack, so it's great to have remove curse pots, neutralize poison, and remove disease. Those are potions you should have with you at all times anyways, at every level, unless you're immune to those things. And if you if you don't have remove disease and neutralize poison, you know you can always use like a like a heal scroll to get rid of those conditions. Go ahead and beat on Horoth, guys, from the front or behind doesn't matter. Silomades is going to appear in a moment. Horoth, realizing that we're kicking his butt, is calling for Sully to come help him. There he goes. Silomades, my most trusted general. Come. And there he is. Okay, uh, Bolo, take Horoth aside. Everybody else can just start beating on Sulamadis. This is the same guy that we fought in Vision of Destruction. And he has almost the same stats. He actually has lower hit points in here, even though this is a higher level radius. 550,000 hit points in VOD and only 440,000 here. And like I said, get in, you know, get in front of him. Get in front of Sully. See what that feels like. If you're interested in soloing this, you're going to have to deal with him on your own. Which means you'd be tanking Sully and Horoth at the same time at this point. Which is pretty intense the first time you're doing it. You know, if you haven't soloed raids before, it's definitely a unique experience. Totally different feeling, totally different experience when you're in the raid by yourself and suddenly you're you're responsible for doing all the jobs and tanking all the bosses and doing all the puzzles and doing all the objectives. And it helps you learn the raids better. And a lot of times you realize like, you know, there are things that other people always did that you never, you know, realized were happening and suddenly you have to figure it all out on your own but this raid and BOD and the next raid is totally soloable. Alright, Sully's dead, and we got 6,000 XP for that optional. Now we can finish off Horoth. See how Bolo's back between these two, or between the, the thrones? It's a great place for the tank to hang out. Tower of Despair. If there are any questions, let me know. Otherwise, enjoy your loot. And don't forget to put your regular boots on. Boots of anchoring make it so that you can't be hasted, so what invariably happens is sometimes you forget and then 
three quests later, you're wondering, why can't I be hasted? Well, it's because you still have your boots of anchoring on. Or you suddenly fall from a high point way faster than expecting to because you no longer have your feather fall on. Yeah. Congrats on the tome. Oh, that's bind a character on a choir. Yeah, I'm not even really sure I can use it very well on this character. So if anyone really wants it, you're welcome to it. If you don't have a plus four charisma tome on that tune, charisma is definitely a solid stat for everybody. You know, it affects UMD, it affects intimidate. Oh, maybe I would have a use for it then. Those trophies of war, by the way, are what are used to upgrade your rings that come out of here. Did anybody get a ring? Yeah, I did, actually. Oh, okay, could you link it, just so I can show the live streamers? Give me a sec. And I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you these trophies of war. Because you were the only one that pulled a ring. You need nine of them to upgrade your ring. How do I link it? Sorry? You just right... You control, right-click. Hold down control, and then right-click the item. And it'll appear in chat. And then just hit enter. There you go. The, you can upgrade them. You can basically, if you're familiar with heroic green steel crafting, the incredible potential part is the upgradable part, and you can basically add like a tier two heroic green steel shard to it. So what was very popular to do back in the day is to add like a plus two insightful stat. And having a plus two insightful stat at level 18 isn't bad. I mean, you can do better than that today, but it's not bad. Plus, it's got exceptional stat on too, so you could have a plus nine stat item at level. 18. Um, Alright, Urusi, I'm going to give you these trophies. In case you ever oh, want to upgrade you. that. Yep. And like I said, you need 9 to do that, and then you make the shard. It's just a regular tier 2 green steel shard. Okay, guys, if there are any questions, let me know. Otherwise, recall out. We'll take 5, and then we'll do epic chronoscope. Don't forget to turn it in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you recall out, Talk to Renar, the Yugoloth dude, and say, I think I took a wrong turn. Can you get me out of here quickly? Okay, let's go. And he takes you right back to Amra. And then you're going to talk to Uloth, the raid giver, to turn it in. Okay, let's uh, let's take five before we do epic chronoscope in the market. Be right back. By the way, folks watching the live stream, if you're on Sarlona and you want to join us for this, you're more than welcome to. Even if you're not new to it, as long as you're just, you know, willing to just hang out and have a good time with us. Hey, welcome back, Machine. We're just, uh, everybody's taking a little break 
we just got done with Tower of Despair, so we'll get started in a couple minutes. But yeah, if you're if you're watching the live stream and you're on Sarlona and you want to join us, just send me a tell right now. I'll get you in here. Hopefully one of my videos upcoming this week is going to be doing a, a, a video where I talk about how to make the Legendary Green Steel sets. You know, I did a video last week on, you know, how I just got my Ender set on Voodoo and I was talking about what the Ender set is. And But I want to do a video like how to make the sets and that's the topic that was very confusing to me. You know, I remember looking at the information on the wiki and it just... You know, it just never clicked. The information is there, but it's just not spelled out very well. And a guildie explained it to me, you know, about a month ago, and it finally made sense. And so I want to do a video. I know that that other people have been very confused about it. Like a lot of people find green, legendary green steel set bonuses very confusing. So I'm gonna do a video laying it all out uh, and how to do it. So it'll it won't be like how to craft a green steel item video because I already have that. It'll be how to construct the sets. So I'm looking forward to do th doing that. I'm really happy with my new green steel ender set, legendary green steel ender set, and I'm going to actually make it on ginger spice when ginger spice gets back to cat. and Fidelma. Okay, I think they're still AFK. You got rid of your upgraded rings a long time. Yeah, I did too, and it was painful. Some of that older stuff is so painful to let go of because we farmed endlessly for them, and we're like, you know, so they're like these little trophies sitting in our banks, but you know, you get to a point where you're like, I gotta make room, you know, I can't, my bank can't be filled up with Bard's Cloaks and TOD rings, you know. <laughs> okay, no problem, we'll, we'll wait for her. But yeah, I, I had one of the sets on my Sork a long time ago, I can't remember which one. I think the Air Savant set. And then I, I was running, I remember at one point I was running the Glacial Wrath set out of Vision of Destruction on my Sork. But that's not, that's not a thing anymore. I had all three pieces for that set too, and it was just so hard to let that dragon touch go, as I just remember endlessly farming for it. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, the like I said, this is being live streamed right now, and. Afterwards, it will be archived on my channel. So, you know, this and a whole bunch of other teaching raid videos are on my channel. So, if you want to check those out or you can't join other events but want to, you know, learn how to do other raids, like, it's all there. So, uh, we have uh, three years worth of teaching raid videos on my channel right now. I have you bookmarked and I uh, watch your uh, videos regularly. Oh, awesome. Are you a commenter on my... Would I know you from maybe comments? No, no. I uh, Right now, I'm still trying to improve the overall quality of the characters with buffs, with 
uh, crafting. So I've watched a lot of your, your later videos when it comes to uh, the Canis, uh, the um, uh, Slave Stock, and the uh, Drippers. Okay, cool. Well, say, say hi sometime in a comment on one of the videos. Will do, thank you. are going to be doing epic chronoscope but the heroic raid is just like level six so um that's that's a e really really easy solo you know you take your over level tune in there but the epic well, epic uh, chronoscope which you have to be at least level 20 to enter is also a solo bull raid and probably would be I haven't tried it in a long time, but I suppose like if you, if you were like right at level 20 and you try to solo it on Epic Elite, that might be kind of challenging, but if you were level 30, you should be fine, or you know, do it on lower difficulty if you want to. And fill the moves back too. Okay. Let's go ahead and step in. We're going to do Elite. Who has never done Chronoscope before, or if you've done it and are still learning it? Awesome. First time. Very nice. Uh, anybody watching the live stream now never done Chronoscope before? I've done it a couple of times, but I probably still have a lot to learn. Okay, cool. Don't fall off the boat, because you will die. I believe your soul stone appears right back here. Let's try it. I'm not afraid to make a fool of myself. <laughs> You've never done it, Gafin? Well, I'm glad you're joining us here. Yep, I appeared right back here on the ship. I, I remember dying once by accident <laughs> playing around. <laughs> but it was so long ago I couldn't remember exactly where I reappeared. Thank you. Uh, we can go ahead and buff up. Lots of different parts to this raid, so it's an explain as you go kind of a raid. The heroic items, like they they have like little like I think three and five piece set bonuses. And even by today's standards, like they're not too bad for like like level five or whatever they are. There's definitely better today, but they're still, you know, kinda neat. Right this way. You can see the chronoscope, which is just a reskin of the prison of the plains and giant home. Um, before we get things started here, I want to show you that there is a stairway that's almost invisible. It's a spiral stair right where I'm at. Very difficult to see, but uh, some people who like to maybe perch, like archers or something, will like to come up here and just range from up here. And... To put this in historical context, uh, for those of you, if you have been playing this game for a long time, this predates me. I've only been playing since 2009. I'm a free-to-play baby. So I wasn't here when the big Devil Invasion event happened. And if you don't know about that, like I think it was maybe early 2009, but I'm not sure exactly the date, that like they had a live event where like the devils invaded the public zone of like the marketplace, and there were like, devils running around, and there was a big countdown event. And, the whole server had to collect these raid runes to make the event finally happen. And when the event finally happened, there was a, there used to be a tent in the middle of the marketplace, and the, there was a big like explosion. The tent blew up, and that's where all the vendors were. And then the the market tent was no more, and it was replaced by the vendors that we have now, the Remembrance Plaza. And then like 
I'm not sure what other content was associated with that event. If you've never seen that, you can go onto YouTube and watch a video of that happening. But the chronoscope is sort of a reenactment of that event. And so we're like going back in time to the devil invasion of the marketplace and thwarting that. And so at the end of chronoscope, you're going to see that same animation of the old market tent and it exploding. So uh, we're going to come in here, talk to Nell, and she tells you to go over and talk to Professor Tremus, and he is the main villain in this raid. So he gets, you talk to him, get things started. And I'm going to pull up a portal, and then we're going to be beset upon by a bunch of devils. Somebody in the live stream said that the charged gauntlets still rock, and and that is actually pretty cool. They're a level five set of gauntlets. I, I think they have like strength two, but they have like shocking something or other on them, and they do like 50 extra electric damage on hit or something. And for a level five set of gloves, that's kind of cool. Thanks for saying that, Ann. So we just got to clear all this trash, and then there's a, I think a red name or an orange name guy. Yeah, Bazdor. If you know, proper speaking, if you're doing this at level or something, you, know, you, I guess you know, if you had insta killers or crowd controllers for all that trash, would be great. But there's no particular special method. So now we're just going to talk to Caratrix, the Mind Flare. Oh wait, there's still a trash mob. Now we talk to Caratrix. A plot, a betrayal, and then he's going to open up a portal. And just click on the portal. And now we're in on the market. Let's come around the corner. And you can see there's uh, Delvarian up here. And if you talk to him, he's going to tell you to go talk to the here. So everybody come back down, everybody, uh, not the High Lords, you, know, you guys don't need to come in here, but um, go into the Rusty Nail at the bottom of the steps. And I want to give you a little tip here before we go do the next objective. If you come to the back here, to this flame-touched weapon vendor, he sells a whole bunch of different kinds of flame-touched weapons. Not every kind of weapon, but a bunch of them. And you can actually pull those out of the raid and use those as crafting blanks. So like with your Kaneth crafting, if you want to make like a flame-touched longsword, you just buy it right here. And so, you know, you can, if you ever needed like a crafting blank, you can just kind of come in here on your level 30 and go in on heroic normal and just do that first fight and come back here to the flame-touch weapon vendor and buy whatever flame-touch blank you want. So just wanted to show you that he's there, and we're going to go over here through this D-door, and there's a great little gag that we like to play on each other that you'll see groups do, and I'm telling you, because you might run into this if you ever join a pug, is that people will throw up a D-door right here in front of this D-door, and you won't notice that it's on top of it, and you click on it, and then you wonder, why am I back at the start of the raid? It's just because somebody's playing a little gag on you. Uh, first thing, I want to also show you a little flavor thing. If you come to the back, you can see Vela back here. Vela is the red dragon boss of the Vault of Night raid, and here she is in elven form. And if you talk to her, um, it's just it's just for flavor. Like there's, She doesn't do anything in this raid, but I wanted to show you that she's there. She's also, incidentally, in the Bogwater Tavern 
as in elven form in the back as an unnamed patron, and you can talk to her, and there, she's sitting with a dwarf. She's way in the back, and if you watch their conversation, they're actually talking about the plot of the Vault of Night. If you're interested in storyline, geeky stuff like I am, then uh, you might find that interesting. <laughs> so we have to talk to Vahir Fenord here to ad just to advance the raid. You tell him you're looking for Nelgan, you go through the dialogue, one thing that can be helpful, especially if you're doing this like heroic at level, is um, you know, before I go, you say, before I go, I have some questions, and you can say, can you give me any aid? And he doesn't, I guess he doesn't do anything on Epic, but in heroic, he actually will give you a few buffs. And I think they're like, you know, like aid and... I can't remember what. He gives you like three different buffs, and they're actually helpful. Like if you're doing this for like... Elite at level, helpful buffs, for sure. A lot of people don't realize that he gives you buffs. So just want you to be aware of that. So now that we've talked to him, we go back down. And usually only one person would come up here and do that. You just need to talk to him to advance the raid. And that's the only reason I wanted to show you that. So just come back out to the right and outside. And now we're going to go up the stairs and start fighting trash mobs. Once we talk to Delvarian, then he will bring down the barrier. And the battle begins. And we enter into a trashed instance of the marketplace. Notice in the upper right hand corner, in the quest box, there is a bunch of optionals. Reduce the double ground legions, reduce the double air legions, that's the Abishai we just killed, and rescue 15 Stormreach defenders. So at this point, everybody can, you know, like, if you're over level like we are, you can really just split up. You know, it's just, it's the market, it's just a trashed version of the market. There's devils all over the place. Traditionally, groups would stay together. But today, you know, you could just split up and kill stuff. And if you find adventurers that, and Stormreach citizens that are, like, knocked out on the ground, you can click on them for that optional. We still do this as a raid in High Lords because it's a it's good it's a good XP raid for XP leveling. And it can be done pretty quickly with a full group. And when we do it as a guild raid, we do the optionals. We you know, with with a full group it's really quick to kill all the trash out here, to rescue all the citizens. But if you were soloing it, you you wouldn't need to do all this. You could just go straight to the next event. But let's go ahead and uh, I know there are some people here that need XP, epic XP. So let's go ahead and do these these optionals. And there's also a few... Don't forget there are four collectibles. I was just going to say there are four collectibles around the zone. Thank you. And the mailbox, the knocked over mailbox in front of the bank is a chest doesn't have named loot, but you can help yourself to that. These Abishai were terrifying back in the day. I mean, they could wipe a party. No big deal today, though. And the next objective will be in the bank, but we're going to go ahead and clear out these optionals. You can walk around just killing mobs and finding citizens and getting your collectibles. There aren't any other zones that you can go into. That you, like, you can't go into the houses. You can go into the Rusty Nail, which we already did, and you can go into the Phoenix Tavern. And there's stuff you got to do there, too. But those are the only other zones that you can go into right now, and then later on, we'll, in Part 2, we'll be going down into the Steam Tunnels.
you'll see some portals appear occasionally. One of them can be right there that spawn mobs. If you look in the center, there's the old market tent. It used to be a separate little zone that you'd go into. And like I said, it's before my time, so I can only describe what I've seen in videos and what I've heard people talk about it. But it was like this big, you know, inside it was really big. It was much bigger than it looks from the outside. And it was like a bunch of platforms and ladders around the outside. And I guess it was horribly inconvenient to go around to all the different vendors, which is, I believe, why they got rid of it. Like you're having to play Donkey Kong to get around to all the different vendors. Is there anybody here that was playing DDO back then and remembers the market tent? No, that's before my time. Sounds pretty cool, though. Storm Reach Adventure. Okay, we still have uh, in the quest box says reduce the air legions, that's the Abishai. Fifteen Storm Reach Defenders, two left. And turn the tide of battle, Devil Incursion, thirty two left, that's the ground forces. So you just keep roaming around till you get all that stuff. Somebody in the live stream saying they were around when the tent was there. And he says he remembers guildies that died in it from falling damage. Like, because, like I said, you have to climb ladders to get up to platforms to the vendors. And I guess I never heard of that before. That's pretty freaking funny that you could die in the tent. <laughs> Here we just completed one of them. We got all the Storm Age citizens. Once we complete these optionals, what some groups will do, and what we do in our guild raid when we do this, is keep, you know, like a couple people out here as killers to just kill the respawns, and you do that to farm conquest, so you get more XP. You maximum kill bonus. So what I'd like to have happen is, I want all the high lords to stay out. You guys already know what happens in the bank, so if all the high lords could stay out and continue killing, and then all the new folks... They're, we're almost done with those optionals, so the High Lords can stay out here and finish those. I want all the new folks to go to the Phoenix Tavern next to the bank now. And thank you, High Lords. There's an objective here, and it doesn't really matter whether you do this objective now or later. But you got to talk to Tremus over here. And he tells you to get the safety deposit box key. And we're just going to go back. And if you got wings or something, you can just jump over.
If you fall, take the ladder. Oh, and there is a shrine here, too. Uh, oh, yeah, right here in the corner. It's hard to see. But if you want to use the shrine, you can. So you have access, you know, at this point in the raid, you have access to this shrine, and there's a shrine in the other tavern. You can use them at any point. There's also going to be a shrine at the end of the first boss fight, which we're going to right now. So go back out of the tavern, and then right around the corner into the bank. And now the boss we're going to fight is um, Blood Plate. Yeah, he's up there on top of his little platform. And go ahead and step forward. There's going to be a bunch of trash mobs that spawn uh, devils, tieflings. You can see he's got a couple of armorers working on him up there. Those armorers are also part of the trash mobs, and they like repair his armor, so. Traditionally, you would want to kill those off pretty quickly. And then also traditionally, like, crowd contro controllers were pretty good in here, but by today's standards, like, we're just going to smash it. But it's good to know the old school methods of doing these raids, because when you're doing them, like, at level or on Reaper mode, you know, you got to know what to do. So it's, it's great if you can have a proper tank to deal with this guy. But get in front of him, see what he feels like, no big deal, when you're over level. A barrier came up once we got this fight started, but it's down now. Now trash comes and Bron or, uh, blood plate takes his break. Blood plates back. Now the base items drop in the heroic raid and can drop in the epic raid as well. So the, like the charge gauntlets and the damn, I can't even remember the name of them all, but. In the epic, you also get the shards and the seals and the scrolls, so this is an old school epic raid, one of the original epic raids, which has the old epic crafting mechanic where if you wanted to make an item epic, you had to collect four items, the base item, the shard of the item, so if it was like charge gauntlets, you had to get the charge gauntlets, the, sh the shard of the charge gauntlets, the scroll of the charge gauntlets, and the seal of the charge gauntlets, and then you'd take all four of those items to the epic altar over in the 12, stick them in there and hit craft, and that would create the epic item, consuming all those four items, including the base item, which is they get consumed making the epic item. So it was definitely a challenge to collect all those things back in the day. It would be easier today to do it, but it still takes some effort to gather all four of those items when you want to make an old school epic item. I have any old school epic items on this tune.
as we're beating blood plate down, his armor is like falling off slowly so that by the time we have him nearly dead, he's like naked. It's kind of funny. And he says some funny things if you're watching his dialogue. And that is all. Two treasure chests. Then you, somebody's got to talk to this dwarf here. And you tell him you need the key to the deposit box. And he gives that to you. But if you didn't talk to uh, the guy in the tavern over there that we talked to before, um, Tremus, then you would have to go talk to Tremus now before you could get the safety deposit box key from, from the dwarf. Anybody want a Hellstroke Great Axe? That's one of the base items. Seals can drop out of the right chest. All these base items can be made epic. I have no idea how good it is epic, but... Double Strike Keen and Cold Iron for a level 4. I suppose that's not bad. Anybody at all want it? Otherwise, I'm just going to feed it to my sentient weapon. Oh, there, okay, there we go. There you go, Mathene. All the base items, by the way, I think all the base items, are bound to a count. Already passed it. Sorry, Larinar. But once you make them epic, they become bound to character. So we got the safety deposit box key. Go ahead and go back out of the bank and over to the rusty nail again, right around the corner. Or the Phoenix Tavern. Excuse me, Phoenix Tavern. So at this point, you could shrine if you want to. There was a shrine in that last part, too. And we're going to go back and talk to Tremus. He's going to be a douchebag. The plot of it, he's, he's looking for this item called the Sliver of Time, and it's actually in the Gans deposit box. Oh, Mathene, where are you? We're in the Phoenix Tavern next to the bank. There you are. So then just talk to Tremus. Give him the key. He uses it to get the sliver of time. And then he uses it to steal Nelgan's youth. I'm headed for the market tent, where I shall kill General Sulamadis with a sliver of time and become the new leader of the Devil Army! Ha 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 ha! That laugh is ridiculous. So he's talking about Sulamadis, who Clinging we just fought in the, the last two raids. Threads of life, Nell wheezes out. My only hope is the Twelve. Leave me here and bring back help. Go, quickly, while I can still stay awake. Talk to Nell, and then you can get your loot. And now we're going to go back out and down to the steam tunnels, down there where we first came into the market uh, by the entrance to the Rusty Nail. Some people would just detour at this point. Kind of a little shortcut. Back in the day, you would definitely want to detour because 
it was scary to run through the market with the trash mobs out here. <laughs> Not so scary anymore. So just make your way over to the steam tunnels, like where STK is. Looks like we got conquest, so high lords, you guys can get your chests and make your way over to the next part. Appreciate you guys doing that. Uh oh, what did I mess up? Oh, gotta talk to. Gotta go back up and talk to the here again at the top of the tower by going into the back of the rusty nail and through the D door at the left. Just to advance the raid and open the way to the steam tunnel. Whatever the devils are doing in the market tent is manifesting vortex winds. The here stares intently at it, a worried frown on his face. Make sure you look above the market tent, too. If you didn't bother to look up and see the vortex, it's really cool looking. The sliver of time must be destroyed in order to save Nell, but it's somewhere in the market tent. The here has opened up a secret way for you to get there through the steam tunnels. Now we go to the steam tunnels. And now we're going to fight another named Orthon, this time Razor Arm. Only hours ago, Devil Legions moved through the steam tunnels in an attempt to flank the Twelve. At least some of them are still here. You see a grotesque Orthon captain below, sporting a large repeating crossbow on his arm. A little perch spot up here, a little ledge, if you're a ranged tune. Otherwise, you can just go down. Hey, uh, Voodoo? Yeah. Uh, just a, a quick note, I don't, I don't recall if you said it or not about the uh, named items out of here. There are three of the named items that are part of the Abishai set that only drop as an end reward item. They don't actually drop within this quest. Oh, okay. Do you know which ones they are? Yes, the Boots of Corrosion, the Charge Gauntlets, and the Inventum Flow. You can only get those from the NPC that gives the end reward. The Helm of Frost Forge Bracers, they drop within the chest in the inside the uh, quest, as well as all the other main items that we want to see. Okay, thank you. So Razor Arm teleports around, and it's just, I believe it's endless trash until he's dead and that you can spike a red dungeon alert with the trash in here Some good hits on you, Fidelma. Fidelma is just level 23, which is about level range for, you know, this is a level 22 on Epic Elite. And so, I think it's 22. No, it's 23, so she, she's right at level, so you can see, like, these mobs will give you a hard time. The Orthon Archer collapses from your relentless blows. Now, somewhere in this sewer should be the portal to the market tent. 
shrine down here at the bottom and two chests. You can get named items and seals from these chests. You just want to give give us a good example, nice. Is the heavy, or actually, I guess it's a light repeater. I think it becomes a heavy repeater though when you upgrade it, to, or when you make it epic. It does indeed. Anybody want that Hellfire crossbow? This is a pretty common drop in here. A full raid group will probably, you know, usually get two, three, four of them. Alright, once we're done here, we pull this lever and it's going to spawn a portal then to the final fight. Go ahead and go through the portal when you're ready. And there are three collectibles around the outside of the zone and some breakables. So go ahead and uh, help yourself to the collectibles. And then you can see Tremus there in the center. And he's calling upon Sulamatis, the boss that we fought in the last two raids. We won't actually fight Sulamatis in this raid, but he does make an appearance at the end. Basically to put the beat down on Tremus. Tremus is attempting to summon the Devil General to this tent. But when he sees you, Tremus stops his incantations and fumes. It's you again! What does it take to make you give up? My Abishai minions, come, destroy the mortal pests! Now we get to fight five Abishai. Who back in the day were really intense. You know, you'd want to have, like, a tank pull them all aside, and then the party would beat on them, and oftentimes in a very specific order you'd want to take out the biggest biggest threats first, but no big deal today. You can look up and you see they're going to form Voltron. They're flying in the air right now and they're going to like form up to create this super Abishai Devastator guy. And High Lords, I want everybody, I want all the High Lords just to hang back. We're going to let the new folks fight the Abishai Devastator just so they can all get a feel for what he's like. So I don't want any High Lords helping the DPSM yet. We'll see how they do. You guys get to do all the work and have all the fun. And there's going to be waves of Devils. Don't worry, we, we, won't, we won't let you die in a fire. I'm just going to... Just I want you guys to experience what he's like. No, no, we realize we're weak and pitiful. Go, come, come help us. <laughs> we'll be here to help if needed. We'll, we'll take care of the trash. And what he's going to do is, like, transform into different... Abishai and and dragons and his his appearance actually changes. It's kind of neat. He turns into like a black dragon Abishai, and then he'll turn into like a black dragon and do some special attacks. And he changes into all the different or a bunch of the different chromium dragons, chromatic dragons, black, white, red, blue, and green. Maybe actually maybe not green. I need to turn off my aura of menace. Is 
everything. Overrun effect is kind of annoying, eh? Yeah. And he's got some special attacks that can be pretty intense too, like these ice shards and his tentacles. I never use diplomacy. Diplomacy failure. <laughs> Oh, we get rid of him anyway. <laughs> Pretty intense, huh? This guy was a total bastard back in the day. I mean, you really needed a, a solid tank to hold him and a dedicated healer to keep the tank up, and then another dedicated healer for the party. But, um, you know, before we finish beating him down, I want to maybe let him go through a couple more of his transformations so you can see some of his other special attacks. Maybe I'll hold him while you guys beat on him. can't see his hit points, he has 675,000. He's an evil outsider. I'm not sure if his, I'm not sure what his DR would be. I'm going to look on the wiki. The wiki just says his DR is good. doing his, his red Abishai and red dragon. But this is going to be it. Um, if you have any questions about how this raid works, once we kill him, it's just going to be, you know, go get our, go get our loot. But you can look around the tent and you can kind of see this was the layout of it back in the day. Now he's doing his fire breath. You can see there are platforms and things all around. And this is where all the, I guess the vendors used to be back in the day. And the raids down the, the subterrain and the raids down there, Hound of Zoria and Vision of Destruction that we did earlier, those are thematically they're about the devil invasion that happened back then, which this storyline all ties into. Now he's doing his blue dragon thing. He's gonna do these uh lightning attacks. Go ahead and keep beating on him. I just wanted him to go through some of his transformations and stuff. In fact, we can go ahead and take him down. Everybody can go ahead and DPS him now. I just wanted you to see some of his special attacks. When he does the black dragon, he do, does like a big Edward's black tentacles and there, he curses you. And... and the white dragon, he puts these ice shards all over the ground which 
can be a little painful. As soon as he goes down, most groups would detour at that point, but I want you guys to be able to see the dialogue that takes place. Oh, you're intimidating him, aren't you, Bolo? Uh, I only hit him once. I did him just now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that screaming's coming from. I don't know if that's on my end or what. Sorry about that, if you're hearing that in the live stream. It's because something's coming through my speakers. Alright, go ahead and watch Tremus. With the combined scream of five voices, the Abishai perish in a swirl of power. At almost the same moment, you become aware of something new and powerful arriving in the tent. A gigantic devil now stands next to Tremus. It stares disdainfully down at him and bellows, Why do you summon me, Tiefling? Are you so eager to die? You're the one who will die when I use the sliver of time to drain your youth! <laughs> Idiotic Tiefling. You cannot steal youth from one who is immortal. No! Mercy, my lord Suleimanis! I think I shall take you back to Shadowrath and have you put to the question. With Suleimanis' departure, the tent begins fluttering with a massive impulse of infernal energy. It may not be prudent to remain here much longer. In a couple of minutes, the tent will explode, and if you're still in here at that point, you will die. So, as I said, most people D door, or you can just take this portal. But I'm, I'm lagged out. I can't move. I seem to be stuck. Awesome. Maybe we'll all die in the tent explosion. <laughs> oh, here's a view of the upper tent, and now we're back down. I can't move at all. Well, whenever you can move, go ahead and go through the portal. And that's going to put you at the top of the tower. And then what you want to do is look out into the middle of the marketplace. And you're actually going to see the tent go through its explosion animation. Oh, no, we're not there. Okay, we have to go, sorry, we have to go into the, the rusty nail and then up top. Here's, again, where people would put that D-door in front of this D-door and make you go back to the start of the raid. <laughs> Everybody up here? Okay, I'll talk to me here. And this will complete the, the raid. Magic surround the market and then you can watch the tent. Reach their peak. Whatever they are trying to do, it is happening now.
and this all actually happened on the live servers in the public instance of the market at one point years ago. Goodbye, tent. This is how history recorded the end of the devil invasion on Stormreach, death and destruction across the marketplace, and the complete annihilation of the old market tent. That's it, guys. If you have any questions about tonight's raids, let me know. Help yourself to four chests. The seal of the charged gauntlets. I mean, shard. Maybe there was back in the day, Anne, about waiting till the tent blows. I, I, you know, I've heard some people say like, if you open up some chests too soon, the others won't spawn. But it's just, it's just delayed. As far as I know, that there is, you know, nothing makes any difference about the, the timing in which you open the chests. Let me get the shard of the Hellstroke Great Axe. Nobody wants the shard of the Charge Gauntlets. The shards are, the shards and seals are bound to account, so you can move them around. And the gem of many facets, by the way, is broken. So is the epic version. And uh, at this point, since this raid's like seven years old or something, I wouldn't ever expect it to be fixed. So I wouldn't even bother with any parts of the gem of many facets. Angry Tiger wants it. There we go. Anybody else going once? Mm -hmm. Going twice. There you go, Angry Tiger. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. Don't forget to turn this in, guys. Uh, it's The turn-in is under the bridge at the south end of the market. I will say that there's an item that commonly drops in the end reward called the goggles of time I think goggles of time sensing and they have a three haste clickies on it so that's actually kind of a cool lobby item it's level five it's got wisdom too not a bad item so take a look at that if it appears in your end reward list thanks for coming out thanks for helping high lords and uh, these are weekly events so I'll post next week's event uh, probably in the Starlona forum on Monday so check that out if you're interested have a great night. Thank you very Good much, everybody. All. You're very welcome. Take care. Thanks a lot. Really like the raid. You're welcome. See you guys. Okay, folks watching the live stream, if you have any final questions about tonight's event, I will be monitoring chat for about five minutes. Let's see what I get here. See if I get those goggles. Nope. But uh, there's the time blade. I think this only drops from the end reward. This actually has all on freedom of movement uh, when it's made epic, which is kind of interesting that a weapon has that. Uh, Boots of Corrosion, Nicola saying, I guess, only from the end reward. Charge Gauntlets, Strength 2, Shocking Blow, Charged with Electricity in melee on an attack roll of 20, which is confirmed as a critical hit, will punch the target. A large electrical shock of 10 to 60 electric damage. A successful save DC 22 reflex. Save for half. It's got the Might of Abishai. So there's a three or five piece set that you can do with the Might of Abishai, I think. Yeah, when any three, and then when all five are equipped, you get additional. So plus one bonus to natural armor, plus one profane bonus to strength and constitution. Like, at level 5, having a plus 1 profane bonus to strength and constitution is still pretty neat, even by today's standards. Like, this set may not be worth going out of your way for, but it's not it's certainly not the worst thing in the world. You could probably, you could do better, but you know, it can still be a fun set to wear for a couple levels in lobbies. And I think I've even heard of people still using their Might of the Abishai set until, like, level 10 or something, you know? Okay...
Apur asks, what is the best item from the raid in my opinion? Well, my opinion is limited because I, I don't play melees. I only play casters, so I can't even speak to, like, if any of the weapons are any good. But I'll just say that one item that has nearly universal appeal, which is pretty cool, is the epic goggles of time sensing because it has, uh, it's either three or five charges of, like, 90 second haste, which is pretty cool if you're not some. But I guess, you know, by the time you get to level 30 anymore, it just seems like if, if people need haste, they have it through feats or whatever. But, I mean, a, a level 20 haste clicky is a pretty cool thing, especially, like, that's that's like a 90-second or two-minute haste, and you get, like, three or five charges of it. So that's a cool item. That's really the one that sticks out in my mind. And I think that's definitely an item that still is relevant by today's standards. Okay, guys, I'm going to shut down the video stream now, but I will monitor the, the text chat for about five minutes. If there are any final questions, let me know. Have a great night.